we love you with everything that we are and everything that we have. We declare that the name of Jesus alone be exalted. Hallelujah. Blessed is he who Blessed is He who
As you sing this song, just the keyboard. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all. There is a cloud of His glory in this place. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of Your glory fall. Let it fall on us tonight. Lord of 
generation will declare your praise to another for you are seated upon the throne mighty majestic in holiness we worship you Lord we bless you we give you all the praise Majesty. Please go ahead and worship Him. This is part of the meeting. When we worship Him, He makes His presence manifest. Sing unto Him psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Make melody from your heart to the Lord. Let a song rise from your spirit to Him. An expression of deep worship. We open up our hearts to God and we connect to your spirit.
Lord give us very strange visitations tonight. Give us strange visitations, oh God. Give us encounters. This is called koinonia. Let it be a place of encounter for us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we just want you to know that we love you. We love you with everything. We are gathered here every week. Not just to receive from you, but to express our love to you. Lord, we want you to know that we love you. We love you from the depths of our hearts. We are not using you to get promotion, house, cars, success. But we love you. Go ahead and just express your love for him in one minute. Let him know that you mean business with him. You love him. Not just that you want to receive from him, but you love him. Hallelujah. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Your word is not an opinion to me. Jesus, For the last time, sing it from the depths of your heart. Jesus, Son of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, be glorified. Please sit down. Just turn to your left and right. Just pat your neighbor on the back. Good evening. And we'll get... Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. And we thank you because you will bless us remarkably hallelujah we just do two things very quickly um we're going to thank god very seriously while you're seated i'll prompt you for the manifold blessings of the lord upon our lives and upon this house we cannot be ungrateful people hallelujah god has done so many wondrous things in recent time and um, we owe him thanks the second thing 
is that we are going to pray for Nigeria in one minute. Hallelujah. Ah, Pastor it's good to see you. Bless you. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for Nigeria. Um, whether or not you are a Nigerian, it doesn't matter. So long as you are in this place, we are very patriotic citizens and we believe in what God is doing. We are going to rise up. Mike, you play the national anthem once and then we'll prophesy into Nigeria and then we'll sit down. Please let's rise. Can we do that? I'm very fanatical about we will contribute our own quota of prayer and prophecy over the nation. I believe in this country. I believe in what God is doing. Nigeria is God's firstborn in Africa. Nigeria will return the Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Nigeria is the holy land that Isaiah spoke about. It was not just amalgamated by Lord Lugard. There is a prophecy upon our nation. Hallelujah. I want you to know that. If you don't know that, you would think we are just... Um, forget the corruption that you see around and all the things that look like there are armed robbers. There are armed robbers in every nation. There are thieves in every nation. There are touts in every nation. There are poor people in every nation. And um, let's take our eyes off these garbages that the devil tries to bring before us. It is true that there seems to be corruption in the system. But then I want you to know that in the midst of this, God is doing something and we choose to see what he is doing. It's a choice. Hallelujah. Ready? Okay. Hallelujah. In one minute, let's lift our voice and prophesy to this nation. We speak to the soul of this nation. Go ahead and pray. Right from the presidency, we speak to the soul of this nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Nigeria remains a place of prophecy. Nigeria remains a habitation of the presence of God. Go ahead and prophesy. In the midst of the corruption, in the midst of all the things that are happening, we declare that the Lord is arising like a mighty one in our midst. We prophesy that Nigeria will step into her prophetic destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, that old proverb will no longer be used in this nation. We speak forth, we declare in the name of Jesus Nigeria will be a place of righteousness, it will be a place of peace, it will be a place of justice. Nigeria will be Pula and Hepzibah. It will be the desire of nations. We prophesy, we speak over our leaders, we speak over the citizens. We curse Boko Haram in the name of Jesus. We declare that the grace of God is at work in this country. Patriotism becomes our anthem in this country. The banner of godliness will never, never be torn in this country. It will be lifted higher than ever. And Lord, we surrender this nation to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, let's just lift our voices and thank God for what He is doing through this ministry. 
the privilege for us to contribute our quota to the advancement of the kingdom. Lift your voice and thank Him for the media ministry, the teachings, the impact, the miracles, the testimonies. We are grateful people. We are grateful people. We return all the thanks and the praise. Thank you for the millions of lives that are changed destinies that are transformed souls that are saved encounters thank you for churches and ministries businesses and lives families individuals and territories that have been influenced by the hand of God upon our lives I'd like us to thank God for it Lord we choose to say thank you we are grateful people we are very, very grateful people. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now ask the Lord for a visitation tonight. He will change us by the power of His Word. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Welcome everyone. Especially our visitors who have come from far. Thank you so much. We honor you. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. And for those outside, we bless you. Can we give them a big, big round of applause? Thank you. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, please. I'd like us to be very sensitive tonight. Because God is going to be touching us. Um, we'll pray. Just share a few things to charge and admonish our hearts. And then we will pray. Philippians chapter 4. From verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Are we there? Let's read. One, okay, it's projected. Um, one to read. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, it says, think on these things. Hallelujah. Um, one of the very powerful things about working in the kingdom system is the fact that we have the privilege to understand the way God works. Not just the results we get from Him but to be able to understand the dynamics of his operation. Hallelujah. When you go to a herbalist, he is not committed to explaining to you how things work. Praise the Lord. He will ask you, turn and move backward, and you have no right to ask him why you should move backward. And he tells you, sit down, and then he says, call the name of whoever you want to kill or whatever you want, or the... the woman you want to marry or the man or whatever took you to his place. Call it three times. And you have no right to say, Baba, why? Because if you dare ask why, it may cost you that asking alone can bring some sort of punishment. Are we together now? And so, when people operate in the world system, usually there is a lot of secrecy. The process of achieving things in the world is usually kept secret so that um, we only see results without understanding the dynamics. And the danger there is that it makes only a few people um, to be equipped enough to be able to produce those results. Are we together now? The Bible tells us that the nation of Israel saw the acts of God, the results. But he said unto Moses, he showed him his way, the dynamics. 
He guided him through the spiritual principles that were responsible for producing those results. And let me tell you something. Your Christian experience is really barren if all you have in your life is results without an understanding, a comprehension into the working principles that produce the results. Hallelujah. So part of the component of kingdom living is not just to celebrate results. This person was healed. This person was blessed. I prophesied and then there was a result. Or God opened the door, favor came. Listen, anything you do not understand its process, you cannot have confidence in it. True faith hinges upon understanding. For as long as there is a lot of vagueness in our Christian experience, we will think we are believing in God. But the truth of the matter is that we are just hoping that we are right. The apostle said, but I know whom I have believed. The word know there is not aware. It's an encounter. He's not saying I am aware of him. He's not talking of awareness. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. That's conviction. I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. So as we attempt to grow spiritually... Remember what I told us spiritual growth is there are two components that constitute spiritual growth. Number one is the measure of your conformity experientially into the person and the image of the Christ. That's the first spiritual index to measure spiritual growth. The degree to which you are coming into conformity experientially. Hallelujah. The degree to which you are becoming an expression of the Christ. Paul prayed and said, my little children of whom I travail, he said, until Christ be formed in you. So the formation of Christ is the experiential building into your person and then the release of the fullness of the life, the character, the quality of the Christ. The second component of spiritual growth is your understanding, your comprehension of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. It matters that you understand how the kingdom system works. Hallelujah. That way, you will be able to function like the Christ. So when the Bible says God made man in his image and after his likeness, that's what he was talking about. The image of Christ is the word glory, is the word doxa, Right? In, in the Greek is doxa, in the Hebrew is kabod. It means the essence of a man, the very component that make that man, whoever he is. So the Bible says God made man in his image. And we know that Christ is the express image of God. So God created man in Christ. Right? He created man to be a reflection of the word, a reflection of the Christ. When he says he made him in his likeness, there it talks about functionality. That man will function the way the Godhead functions. Are we together now? And so, the way the Godhead creates is the way man should function creatively. The way the Godhead thinks is the way man should think. Are we together now? And so, when we say you are growing spiritually, don't, don't confuse it. We are not just saying you are seeing visions or angels or throwing people under the anointing. You can measure your spiritual growth at any point by first examining through the eyes and the mirror of God's word, to what degree you are becoming like the Christ, experientially. That's the degree to which the fruit of the Spirit is at work in you. The degree to which the spirit man has gained ascendance over the flesh. Right? The degree to which carnality um, is, is, is dead from your life. The degree to which you become heavenly minded. That you set your hearts on the things that are above and not the things that are in the world. And then your understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Listen, listen, listen. It is possible to conform into the image of the Christ and never experientially enjoy the benefits. The benefits of kingdom living. You can conform to the image of the Christ, but then it takes a comprehension of the laws of the kingdom for you to be able to walk in success, prosperity, divine health, etc., etc. Hallelujah. 
There are many believers who love God. There are many believers who are sincere. But sincerity is not the key to victory. Are we together now? It takes more than sincerity to be victorious. Psalms 82 verse 5, please. The Bible says, they know not. So that's the, that's the diagnosis. Although they are mighty men, verse 1 starts by saying, God stands in the congregation of the mighty. And then he begins to question the people. Right? Verse 5 says, they know not, neither will they understand. It says they grow in darkness, they walk in darkness, and as a result, the earth is out of its course. The next verse says, know ye not, do you not know, have you not come into this understanding, that ye are gods, and that all of you, not some of you, not men of God, ye are gods, is that true? And then it says, um, um, how, the, how does he put it now? He says, know ye not that ye are gods and... Then he says in verse 7, he says, but ye shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. So the question is, they know not. Neither will they understand. Notice there are two things there. Right? Let me tell you something. Wisdom, listen, listen. Wisdom is knowing what to do. Understanding is knowing how to do it. That's why the Bible says, with all your getting, it will still not profit you. Get understanding. The dynamics of its operation. That way your success becomes predictable. It may take time, but I guarantee you, for as long as there is a day after a night, your success will be inevitable. Hallelujah. And so as I challenge us week after week, the goal is to help us to gain mastery. Everybody say mastery. To gain mastery over the laws and the principles of the kingdom. So that on the strength of our understanding, we will be able to walk in dominion. You've heard me say it again and again. That dominion is not an impartation. There is no such thing as an impartation for dominion. Hallelujah. Dominion is what happens to you when you come into an understanding of the principles of the kingdom. For as long as you live, you will never have a problem wearing a shirt and a trouser or your skirt because there is a principle. Is that true? There are all kinds of tailors all around the world, but they produce similar results because tailoring works by principle. Nobody sits down and says, I think like um, turning the clothes this way. There is a formula. Are we together now? Tonight, I just want us to examine two things as we pray that will help us. I'm amazed Brothers and sisters, listen. I'm amazed at how many believers think that because they are born again, automatically their lives will become that desired heaven on its own. Nothing can be further from the truth. While it is true that salvation gives us access to the fullness of all that Christ has purchased, it takes understanding to walk into the experience of it. The Bible says that God has put all things under his feet. It says, but as it is right now, experientially, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? And so, so that our Christian experience does not become a circle of frustration. That on one side you are reading your Bible and you are seeing the blessings and the promises of God. And while it is true that the high vote of the Christian pursuit is not things. We are not walking. We don't just seek God and pursue Him just for things. Hallelujah. The goal is not to get things. However, I want you to know that eventually in your life, you will need consolations to be... Um, they serve as an evidence and as a motivation to your Christian experience. Are you following what I'm saying now? So eventually, when your life refuses to bear fruit, it will begin to challenge your convictions about God. 
while it is true that we love God whether the door is open or not, while it is true that we will serve Him no matter what happens, brothers and sisters, it is best to serve God. See, man was never designed to serve God under pain, under penury, under suffering. This is why when you serve God under those conditions, it's called sacrifice. Because you were not designed by default to function that way. Are we together now? So you must believe that God wants you to walk into the victory, the blessings, the prosperity, the increase. And now sometimes we men of God fall victims um, of misleading God's people in a sincere attempt to make people spiritually minded, in a sincere attempt to push people to become spiritual and to bring people to a point where our passion for God is above and beyond everything. We, we seem to trivialize the fact that God is interested in their success. Are we together now? So we have a, a congregation of people who love God, but they are failures in every way. And then eventually, the reality of their fruitlessness begins to choke their Christian experience. And by the grace of God, everything that you will hear will be within the context of the kingdom and within the balance that will make your life holistic. Are we together now? So you will be taught, as always, that your love for God will be the ultimate. You cannot afford to tie your work with God to money and car and prosperity and marriage and child and whatsoever. No, 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 no. It will make your Christian experience fake. Are we together now? However, it is God's desire for you to have a consolation in your Christian experience. Say amen. I've taught us again and again that materialism is not having materials. There are poor people who are materialistic. Absolutely. Materialism has nothing to do with materials. Materialism is the influence of the flesh. The influence of things around. When they occupy the place of God. Don't be mistaken that when you see somebody come out of a jeep. Or somebody wears a designer clothes. That person is materialistic. Far from it. In fact, let me tell you sincerely, most wealthy people conquered money to be wealthy in the first place. Are we together now? So God wants your success and my success. Say amen. amen. But Paul began to give us one key to the success principles of the Spirit. And he says, finally, brethren, let me talk about your thought life. Paul in many scriptures and the psalmist and Jesus himself begins to tell us that in our quest to become all that God has destined for us, we must pay attention to our minds. We must pay attention to our thought life. Our convictions and the things that we think about have a lot to do with the manifestation of our reality. And again and again, the word keeps challenging us to order our thoughts aright. Are we together now? So the Bible begins to tell us that if you want to succeed in life, your thoughts must be cultured. They must be governed. I've taught us again and again that your life revolves around your most dominant thoughts. This is very, very true. That your life becomes eventually a reflection of your convictions. Right? And, and so in, in Psalm 19, let's look at Psalm 19 verse 14. The psalmist puts it, in a very interesting way. Two keys that are responsible for our success in life. Two keys that are responsible. Psalm 19 verse 14. I, I believe, yes, it should be. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let's turn there. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 19 verse 14. Let's read it together. One to read. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The psalmist tells us to be successful. There are two things that are very important. Number one is the meditation, the contemplation, the content of your heart. And heart there is interchanged in many places in scripture with mind. Are we together now? 
the meditations of your heart that lead to the words of your mouth can decide your destiny. This is very, very important. Hallelujah. Now, um, many people have not been taught that their mentality, their mindset, their ideologies are largely responsible for the quality of their life. There are people who pray all the time and, and, and now there is a place for, you know, taking charge of spiritual forces that attempts to cause people to fail and so on and so forth. But we must realize that not everything about a man's failure is tied to devils and witches and wizards and so on and so forth. There are many of us who do not have the kind of mental state that will afford the Holy Spirit birth in us the things that will create a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. And so Paul is teaching us that whatsoever things, he's giving us spiritual parameters that govern our thought life. Because I tell you this sincerely, there is no man that wins the Olympic by mistake. There's no such thing as success by mistake. It doesn't happen. Hallelujah. So it must be intentional. And we must upgrade our mindset. You can um, make, make reference to our teaching on pulling down strongholds. Right? That message will bless you. Because a man is entirely a summation of his mindset and ideology. And I told us how that our ideologies are principally formed from our cultures. Is that true? Our cultural background. We come from different areas with different ideologies about God, about success, about marriage, about life, about victory, about failure, etc. When we come to God... We don't come so that he will add to those faulty mindsets. We open up our spirit and we ask him to edit. That everything that is not consistent with the pattern of the Christ must leave. Even if it is culturally correct. Is God speaking to us now? So many of us are victims of culture. We have held on to age-long stumbling blocks that will never afford us the opportunity to taste of kingdom success. We hold on to these things, we cherish them so much, and the devil keeps taking advantage of them and destroying our lives. But we must choose to lay them down in the name of Jesus Christ. I told us also that our mindset are formed as a result of our levels of exposure. The reality you do not know exists, you cannot open up your heart to take it. Is that true? And so the word of God exposes us to the possibilities that exist. So that by faith we can open up ourselves and tap into those possibilities. Our mindsets are also framed from our past. And for many of us, our past are not good experiences. But we have allowed it to become part of the walls in our minds that make us feel we are failures. There are many of us seated here who believe that we really cannot do much. And so that limitation that has come from our repeated failures of the past creates stumbling blocks and stop us from becoming all that God has destined. Take seriously what I'm sharing with you because your life is at the mercy of this truth. Hallelujah. Are we together? Let the words of my mouth, let the contemplations and the meditations of my heart be such that it is acceptable unto you. Let it be such that it is consistent with your ways. If you must live in the kingdom, you must subscribe to God's way of doing things. See, the word of God is not an opinion. A believer is not just one who believes the word of God. A believer is one who submits to the word of God. You submit to it ultimately, regardless of what you feel about it. Are we together now? If I can change your mindset, then you can prosper. I guarantee you. I don't care what the limitation is right now. But if you refuse to allow your mindset to be changed, then there is nothing that can be done to you. A man's limitation is primarily his mindset. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace from God for a change of mindset, a change of ideology. Hallelujah. This was the limitation of Abraham. 
For a long time, God wanted to do great things through his life, but his limitation became a stumbling block. And one time, God called him out and said, Abraham, I want to expand your mind. Attempt to count the stars. And he kept trying and failing and, you know, he gave up and God said, this is how your seed will be. Finally, Abraham believed God. And the Bible says he was counted unto him for righteousness. Hallelujah. It's very, very important for us to understand. Um, your thought life. Listen. Your thought life is a mechanism for creating things in your physical environment. Your mind is like a machine. It's a spiritual component that is locked up in you that is responsible for creation. I need you to understand this. This is the principle of creation. Many people have been taught that creation is just about speaking. No, it's not about speaking alone. There are two components that must coexist for creation to happen. Listen, every time you speak what is not consistent with your mind, Every time you speak what is not consistent with that which is locked up in your spirit, you just wasted your time. Believe me. Even for salvation, the Bible says, with the heart man believes. And on the strength of that conviction, with the mouth, confession is made and it will lead to salvation. Are we together now? So in that same way, the first key to succeeding is your conviction within. That internal work. That coming to a point where your thought life is completely governed by the word of God. We call that state having the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is not just a mind that is spiritual. The mind of Christ is the mind that has been adjusted to think entirely from God's perspective. So your viewpoint is consistent with the word of God. Hallelujah. We have not been taught the consequences of thinking evil. We have not been taught the consequences of having a faulty mindset. Listen, your mind and your thought life will eventually create what you are thinking. Believe me on this when I tell you. Believe me. Eventually. And so Satan destroys our lives, not just by bringing physical tragedies, but because for many of us, our minds have not been fortified by the word of God. We have not embraced the spirit of God enough to produce that kind of alignment and adjustment. We allow all kinds of thoughts. That's why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. In other words, this battle is not in the flesh realm. It says, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then it says, casting down every imagination comes from the word Yezah. Creative thoughts that are planted by Satan. Because if it is in your mind and it becomes an obsession, it must manifest. It is not if, it is when. Listen, whatever stays in your mind long enough, I guarantee you, no power in existence will stop it from manifesting. Genesis 11. Genesis 11. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. I believe in you. Let's read. This was a strange man called Nimrod Kush. Hallelujah. That the Bible says they, are, they were attempting to build a city. Look at, please. Whether it is spiritual or physical is audacious. Let's just, let's, let's take it from there. Are we, uh, there are all kinds of schools of thought, whether it was physical or spiritual. That's not really the most important thing. The fact that it was a conception in the heart of man to build a tower. Listen to how men think. Go to, come, let us build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us by it make a name for ourselves. According to them, they did not see any impossibility. Not impossibility of raw materials, not impossibility of workforce, not impossibility of anything. Let's see what happened. Verse 4. Verse 4. And they said, come, let us build us a city and a tower 
whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad from the face of the whole earth. Are you ready? Now watch this. This was Nimrod proposing the idea. Are we together? He was proposing the idea because he knew that if the people begin to think, if they can get to a point where that mental picture is in them, the same way it's in him, nothing will stop them. Verse 5. He says, And the Lord came down to see the tower which the children of men did what? Look at it. Not the tower that they are building. In God's mind, they have finished it. Look at this. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> Nimrod says, look guys, come together. Let us build a city. We want something to manifest physically. But we know that this is, everything is truly possible. So I want to do something to your mindset. Do you guys believe we are able? And they said yes. And God was watching. The moment they agreed, God said the house was finished. He came down to see what they had built. Can you imagine that? That a man had come to a point of persuasion where his thought life has agreed with the word of God. Right? And then the Bible tells us that it will be manifested. Listen, listen. Do you know that God had to scatter them for that plan to fail? God did not sit in heaven and say, look, don't worry, these guys are just silly people. He literally had to bring confusion to their languages so that they no longer would reason with one another. Every business empire you see today, every successful ministry, every impactful believer who has been mightily used by God. Listen, when God comes to you, when He calls you, the second assignment is not to use you. When He calls you, listen, He equips you. And part of that equipment is he has to make you get to a point where your mind resonates with his own. And then he can send you anywhere. When he called Moses, he said, Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh. And Moses said, huh, I, I know Ramesses. Who do I tell them I sent me? And he said, you are calling for a revelation. I am that I am. I want to show you a bit of the possibilities that are in me. And when he showed Moses, he said, on the strength of this mental picture, go. Your life is at the mercy of your thought. First and foremost, your mind, your thought life. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing ideas. This is the spiritual gateway for birthing creativity. This is the spiritual gateway for manifestation. This happens with the anointing and every other thing. Listen. If you ever will raise a dead, you must have conviction enough to stand before one. Are we together now? When a man walks to a sick body and looks at the sick body, you are seeing that this guy has cancer. Are we together? They are showing you a medical report. Terminal case of cancer. Yet you have the gods to overlook that report. Because there is a higher reality. Your mind has been programmed to see something higher. And better. Are we together now? You pray for someone on a wheelchair. Your physical eyes is seeing limbs that are not... I mean, these limbs, even if he's well, he can't stand. Because he's just skin bones. And you have the audacity to hold his hand and say, stand up. Listen. Sit down, sir. Thank you. Your life is a reflection of the excellency of your mindset. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. The Bible never said all things are possible for everybody. It says to him that believes. Your first assignment is not to look for money to prosper. Believe me. Your first assignment is not to look for a job or a business idea. Please believe me on this. Your first assignment is not to run around looking for helpers. Your first assignment is to stay and rise to a point where your mindset, where you are obsessed with the possibilities, where the word of God literally is like your mirror. The same way when you look at a mirror, you see yourself. Are we together now? 
The Bible says as we behold him, we are changed. There is a transition. There is a transition. The workers, listen, none of you signed any form that you will come for Koinonia this evening. Did you sign any form? But the workers came as early as maybe six, seven, eight, and they started dressing everything. The worship team was preparing. You know why? Because something has happened to them. There is an understanding. They know that God will draw his people to himself and bless them. Imagine if they sat down and said, let's watch. If we see people come, are we together now? I mean, who told the people that there will be an overflow outside? Don't say it's because it has been happening. There was a first day. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. The oil was at the mercy of the vessel. The oil was not small. The vessel was small. So the, oil, the vessel made the oil look small. Are we together? The prophet said, go and enlarge your capacity. Borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. Enlarge your capacity. The moment there were vessels, the oil started multiplying. I learned this early in life. I've studied Jesus Christ and I've studied very successful people. Every successful person in life, every person that has been used mightily by God, first and foremost got to a point where they were convicted that the ability of the Spirit can work in and through them. Are we together now? Everyone, every single one of them. It took them time, but they stayed until they got to a point where their construction was unwavering. So you hear Job speaking things like, Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He says, All the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change comes. In other words, he knew his change would come. When David was in the cave of Adullam, he knew that inevitably he was meant for the palace. Listen, listen, the devil stands helpless in the face of a man who has made the word of God his mentality. At that point, Satan becomes powerless, truly in your life, because you are no longer governed by the circumstances and the things that your optical eye sees. Your convictions are higher than your physical perceptions. So you know that God is able. Now the question is, Satan has surrounded, or the issue is, Satan has surrounded our lives. Listen, he has surrounded our lives with things that compel us to think in a certain way. This is what cosmos is all about. Babylon, the, this godless system. Satan has created structures around our environment. They are called mind control systems. From the movies. Are we together now? To the way people behave, right? To spiritual forces that influence men. All of them are aimed at bringing people to think in a certain way. So by the time a lady watches a movie and she finds out that evil is celebrated, in that movie, a lady steals a man's money and they clap for her as being brave. So the devil gives your mind a new definition of what great means. That whenever you are able to oppress another successfully, you are great. And so you receive it. Are we together now? And then eventually, from morning till night, we walk out in the morning and return to our homes with all kinds of ideologies that are not consistent with the word of God. And what we keep seeing in our lives is a physical manifestation of things we did not bargain for but you thought about them long enough. That thought life became so powerful that it necessarily made us to start speaking it. Listen, there is a difference between speaking just because you want to talk and you are responding to the overflow of the content in your mind. The Bible says every time your mind is full, you must speak. It's not about whether you want or not. Uh -uh. It said, be ye filled with the Spirit. Immediately, say you will start speaking. So the moment your mind is full, your mouth will start speaking. 
Is God helping us? And so we begin to speak. And while we are speaking, we do not know that we are creating. Every time there is a union between your thought life and your words, there must be creation. So we call ourselves names that we have thought about for so long and we have verbalized. And then our lives inevitably become it. Job said this. He said, the things that I've feared most have come upon me. He feared many things, but the one he feared most became his reality. Are we together? There were many things he was afraid of, but the most dominant fear became his reality. So if you want to reign in life, you must realize that part of your assignment with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is to come to a point where you think like Christ. I love Jesus. They brought five loaves and two fish. They said, ah, how are we going to feed these people? Jesus said, no, 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 no. Be silent. Don't corrupt my mindset. I know all things are possible. I'm El Shaddai. That you cannot see it does not mean it's not there. And he told them, no. He lifted it and he gave thanks. And he told the people, he said, go and start sharing it. Sir, what about the embarrassment? Go and start sharing it. And the Bible says, as they were going, see that. This is why you find out that certain things happen to people in certain ways. Your father kept calling you stupid from birth. At 11 years, you were behaving helplessly stupid. Now, he thought he was venting anger. He did not know he was creating. Are we together now? They started calling the lady prostitute. You don't stay in your home. You go to somebody's home. And at age 13, 14, she looks back and sees that ah, she's beginning to have a lustful desire for men. Because every time your mind... I'm not just talking of hallucination. When your mind holds on to it like a conviction and your word speaks, it's like a woman and a man meeting together. There must be creation. I never confess things I don't believe because I'm wasting my time. Are we together? I pray that you will find, you will see light in what I'm sharing with you. When you see this, you will know that there is nothing coincidence about a man's destiny. Every man receives the fruit of what he created or allowed others to create for him. Hallelujah. And so every time your physical life is manifesting things that are not consistent with what the word of God says, the key is not to complain. The key is to take your eyes away. The Bible says looking unto Jesus. Not looking on to your circumstances. Not looking on to your situations. Looking on to Jesus. He calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. Right from the time we were 10, 20 in this ministry, I already saw a crowd. I preached that way. I behaved that way. My convictions have never increased or decreased with people. Because what is in me is stronger than what I see. What you are seeing today is what I spoke yesterday. Tomorrow will tell you what I'm speaking now. Are you getting what I'm saying now? No, 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 no. What you are seeing today is not my mindset of today. <laughs> the physical realm always delays. The realm of the spirit is faster. I've gone ahead of this realm. Because there is the power of creation. You can change any situation in your life. It may take a while, but as far as the heaven is above the earth, you can change it. The first thing is not just to shout and say, God forbid! God forbid is not a confession. It's just an attempt to be human. Are we together now? There are so many people who make all kinds of statements without the conviction to support it, and so there are only statements, no creation. I will never fail me. God forbid. I won't fail. Yet you are seeing it right before you. Because you see, what you are saying and what you are thinking 
are not the same. So there is no creation. Are we together now? There are many pastors who keep speaking and saying in the name of Jesus, I have this and that and that, but the truth is their convictions are not true. After the church service, when they now sit down in a non-church platform, they start saying the things they really believe. Say, like, oh boy, man, the truth is, Sky, it's not easy. Oh. To be a man is not a day's job, truly, truly. That's what they believe. You see that? That's their conviction. It's easy for us to use all kinds of spiritual words on stage. Be and thou, and you know God is faithful. Everybody say God is faithful. But the truth is, whatever is the pivot of your thinking is what will be your expression even when you are alone. Ah, when I'm alone, I say the same thing. I look at myself and I prophesy and I speak. This is not just positive thinking. This is kingdom living. Are, are we together now? It, it's not just positive thinking, brothers and sisters. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. Creation is still on. That's what makes us God. Co-creators. But we have lost the art of understanding God's technology of creation. It's not just speaking. It's speaking on the strength of a conviction. That's what produces creation. Hallelujah. What is the sum total of your ideology while you are seated here? Many of us believe all kinds of lies that the devil has put in us. And Paul is saying, finally, he says, I've, I've discussed other issues with you, but I cannot end this episode this way. Finally, whatsoever things are true, don't think lies. What is a lie? Anything the word of God did not endorse. Anything at all. So your situation currently is a lie, as far as the word of God says. Hmm. See, see, the Bible puts it this way. I love the Bible. It inspires me. It says, listen, it says for our light affliction. Imagine the hell you are going through and the Bible calls it light. For our light affliction. <laughs> then it says, which is but for a moment. It costs 10 years a moment. Now it's up to you to choose to believe what the word has said. For our life affliction, which is bought for a moment, it says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Then it says this, why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. How do you see what is unseen? He never said the things that are unreal. It only said they are unseen. That tells you all you see is not all there is. Brothers and sisters, there are microorganisms in this room. You cannot see them. But you keep something, keep kunu, leave it open for four days and see what it will turn into. It reveals to you that there are microorganisms, there are bacteria all around. To be carnally minded is to be governed entirely by your vision, your, your physical vision. And the devil knows that we are people who walk sensually. And so he has taken advantage of our senses to corrupt the reality of this principle. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, you get the praise, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say thank you. God cannot do much with you if your mind does not authorize him to create realities in your life. God wants to find expression in your world. He wants to do a lot of great and mighty things. But he's dependent on your mindset. It's not just speaking. You speak on the strength of conviction. The world, our parents, our environment, right? The mindset in Nigeria has made us to think in a certain way. To an extent, 
that when you fail, right, when things are not working in your life, rather than staying with God and staying true until there is a manifestation, you look for somebody who has failed more than you and you justify it. You see an ideology. It's supposed to be a solidarity, a comfort, but it has destroyed us. So someone comes with a membership of 20 people and then God shows you that I can do more with you. And you say, am, am I not better than this guy? At least I'm, I'm 20, he's 4. And by that we guarantee our mediocrity. And we remain there. Never to rise. Never to rise. Let me tell you how I think. I lock up myself in a room or wherever there is, and I pray in tongues. I soak myself with worship, and I take a journey through the Word of God because I don't trust anything else. Believe me. Any other thing outside the Word of God is a lie. Now, it's difficult to convince you because for us, a lie is anything you cannot see, you cannot touch, or anything that is not true based on a reference. Jesus said, I am the way. I am reality. Not just an information that is correct. Truth is not what is correct. Truth is what has life in it. Anything that does not have the life of God in it is not truth. That's why it may be a physical reality that you have a lump, a breast lump or a growth on your legs. But the Word of God tells you, listen, listen, listen. The Word of God tells you that that is an affliction that can leave. It opens you up to the possibility that it can leave. It's up to you to now dwell on this physical reality and die with it. Listen, when, remember in, in the Bible... Remember in the Bible, that's why your eye, your eye is very important in your dominion. What you see, physically and spiritually. Remember, brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches us that there was a time, listen, there was a time when the nation of Israel were dying and all of that and all of that, serpents and so on and so forth. And he told Moses to make a serpent and put it up. Remember? And he said, if you can just look at it, you will be free. It matters what you see. It matters what you look at. You cannot sit down watching all kinds of devilish movies, watching all kinds of things, exposing yourself to environments that feed your mind wrongly. And then you want your life to conform to the word of God. It will not happen that way. So I surround myself. I soak myself with this atmosphere of worship. And then I begin to take a journey through the word of God. I read the book of Joshua. And I see what God told me. That no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And like a camera. That's it. You see that? You see what this camera is doing? That's what your mind does to everything. Your mind snaps everything. It's up to you to delete every junk in your mind. By the word of God. Your mind is like a camera. Listen. If you check this right now, you will see what was captured. How many of you, look at me, how many of you have posed well for a picture? You thought you posed well, but when you checked what it captured, your eyes were closed. You would have asked you that you didn't close your eyes. But at the point of capture, that's it. That's how our minds are. You think you are getting it right, but your, your reality is telling you something is wrong up there. If we are to Look at these pictures right now. You may think you were standing very cute, but you find out that you were even like this sleeping. But you can never remember when you did that. The camera can remember. You see that? So, you begin to see repeated woes in your life and say, when did I do this? I go to church every day. I pray. And your mind says, well, as far as I'm concerned, every time you spoke, you spoke things that were not consistent with your mind. And the few times you spoke what was consistent with your mind, there was creation. This is the child. 
Though we are failures, it's not for us. This and that and that and that. It's not for people like us. And listen, the, the most, the most, the, the saddest part of this is people who are negative about life. Have you seen people like that? Let me advise you, run away from them quickly. Even if you grew up together, it's time to break away from them. There are people who stand close to you. In five minutes, they are saying something negative. It's a devilish attitude. Believe me, if that thing is at work in your life, you need a retreat. Use the weekend. Retreat. Sam, come. Is it that, is it that in, in Koinonia, people are allowed to just sleep like that while the message is going on? You see what he's thinking. Are we together now? And then you move around and you are looking, eh, I'm seeing most Pastor Shegu and his wife do and co. What are they trying to tell us? <laughs> are we together? And then you saw that cake now. You see, th- their minds are negative. They always look for what is not working well. That's why their lives fail. So they try to attract people to themselves who are like them. He say, look, you may be a sincere person, but it must change. There are people like that. They never are optimistic about life. Good morning. What is good about the morning? That's why the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. It didn't say the Lord and Satan. This is the day the Lord made. Like you cook food for somebody. This is the day that the Lord made. He said, let us rejoice and be glad. Not complain and be angry. Listen, this is the revelation I have. So I come out in the morning and somebody insults me. And I remember, this is the day the Lord has made. My assignment for me to receive what he has made is until I rejoice and I am glad. Listen, listen. This looks little, but I'm teaching you something. The Bible is saying in the realm of the spirit, the day has been made. Because it says it daily loads us with benefit. It has not manifested yet. There is a condition. Your condition is rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. Because God made the day. Satan also made the day. There is how you receive what he has made. So every time you wake up, there are two days in one. You choose the day you want to see. So I get up in the morning thinking, I'm awake. Somebody will be saved because of my life today. Someone will be filled with the Holy Spirit because of my life today. Koinonia is rising higher. And somebody calls you and says, do you know that I'm, I've not eaten anything? And I say, don't worry, our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. This is, I'm showing you how I'm thinking. Listen. I'm not just saying this because I'm, I'm acting here. It has become my construction. It's impossible to entertain any negative thought without a scripture rising as a standard. If I lack explanation for the situation like Job, I will say God is greater. God is greater. Lord, I count you faithful. The reason why your day is always a tragedy is because there is no rejoicing. Satan knows that. And so from, it's, it's from your bedmate. Right? Immediately you wake up, you just look and say, why are you looking ugly like this? You say, please don't try me. I'm, 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 I'm angry this morning. I had a, a, a dream that is not supposed to be. The moment you step down, you find out that there's no light for you to bath. You see, there are orchestrations in your life, but the Bible says rejoice. And be glad. It didn't say rejoice because good things are happening. Rejoice as a rule. Rejoice as a key. Are we together now? How many of you wake up and rejoice? In spite of the fact that immediately you rejoice, somebody just sent you a text and said, I've been tolerating you for a long time. I just want you to know that I heard what you said about me. Well, like if I did this and that, and you read the text. Listen, listen. It's up to you to allow that thing in your mind and start speaking. And you find out that for one hour you are thinking and resentment is becoming your most dominant thought. And you verbalize it. Oh God, punish somebody for me. 
see, the Bible says, do not say before an angel, I made a mistake. Because they execute the words of the saints. Are we together? I never allowed, see, you can't be great thinking the way people are thinking. Somebody comes and tells you certain things and you say, God bless you. I rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. He emphasizes it. He never said rejoice because you are happy. You went to the board and you saw what looked like. Um, it didn't look like your destiny and you, you, you just laugh. Not just that you move around and then you stand and say anybody that tries me will die in this place today. No. Creation is happening every day. Every time. Unfortunately, most of what we are creating in our lives are tragedies and setbacks. Another aspect to this is anything you do not celebrate in another person, you are not authorized to have it in your life. Oh, this is a key in the spirit. For as long as I keep talking about Sam, forget about stepping into the worship anointing. I will never. For as long as I trivialize Mike's grace. You see that? Many of us do not have this attitude of genuinely celebrating people. See, see, from this night I'm giving you an assignment. Remove the negativism out of your atmosphere. And you'll be amazed to see what will begin to happen in your life. One of the happiest person I've seen in my life is a gentleman called Alex. Not many of you know him. Alex is a very interesting personality. He used to play bass guitar for me before he traveled abroad to study. The only time I saw Alex sick, he said he had malaria. I couldn't believe it. Because he was laughing. I said, Alex, malaria. No, you are, you are kidding. I've never seen him angry. Believe me, those who know him will tell you. He used to cook. He uses hot pot. He will cook and because I don't eat much, he will just fetch more. and say, Pastor Josh, this is your own. He will just push it and sit down with the pot and eat it. Always laughing. I mean, there was a time we lost one of our sisters years ago and he stood. Everybody was being remorseful. He was trying to be remorseful and I laughed. I said, this is not you. You are a joyful person. Those kind of people hardly fall sick, if at all. They are very happy. They don't see no masquerade chasing them in any dream. Because they are happy. They are happy. The praise of God is in their mouth. They are always optimistic. Are, are we together now? Always optimistic. Listen, walk with people like that. They are always optimistic. Every time they see challenges, tell them, don't worry. There's a better day. These are the kinds of people to walk with. Not those who say, let's sit down here. I told you. Next time when I talk, you will listen to me. No, no, don't walk with those kinds of people. There are pastors I will never work with. They are negative. They are cynical. They are always complaining. Why is ministry not working? Ministry is working. Are we together? Never. I will never become a party to those kinds of things. No. God is faithful. The Bible says the path of the just. I'm the just. It shines brighter and brighter. And as a pastor, you have to be careful. Don't carry your bad day and come and land it on your congregation. There are congregations that study the, the pastor. The moment they see the man like this, they know they are in for it. Because now he comes up and see those who are pastors laughing. You may not understand. Sometimes you can really be angry. And those who have annoyed you are there seated. And after singing the praise and worship, you are now looking. And then you say, stand up. And they, they pretend as if they didn't hear it. Did, did I not say, I will curse you now. In this church, you people don't give, you don't honor your leaders, people are suffering. Maybe the guy is broke, things are not working, he has come on stage, the members are not cooperating, you are not sowing, no prophet offering, no love offering, no seed of honor. The man is frustrated, his wife is telling him, look, let leave this job, go and leave this ministry, go and look for a job. And he carries that anger. And then everybody is in trouble, the drummer is in trouble. The keyboard this is in trouble. Usually it's the worship team that gets to receive the, the last. You, you know that, right? Let's appreciate the worship team. You don't know what they go through. Really? It's 
then immediately you finish all kinds of I choose to be positive. It's a choice. I choose to be true. I refuse to meditate on negative things. My life is a blessing. Listen, we're going to pray. I, I just showed us this principle. I will never think on things that are not true. I will never think on things that are not pure. I will never think on things that are not noble. I will, I, no man will preach me into this. No. There's no amount of message. I will not declare my loyalty to anybody who is negative. No. I love you, but carry your trouble and go away with it. I see life only in one direction. Only one direction. The way the word of God says it should be. And no matter what is in my obstacle now, what is in me is bigger than it. It's a matter of time. My physical reality will always, inevitably, Oh, that you will believe this. And you will know that that one shoe you have is not all that there is. And you stop feeling negative. You will celebrate that moment because you are waving it goodbye forever. Are we together now? Pressure is a product of a poor perception. This is the reason why many people are under pressure. You are trying to buy a suit of 100,000 or 200,000 now because you are trying to show you are successful. Listen, 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 listen. If you can agree with God up here, Satan is no longer a factor. The only way Satan stops your harvest is to stop your seed time. Once it is sown, it becomes automatic. And the word of God is that seed. You ask the leaders, every time we're having leaders meeting, we don't have time for any sorrowing and mourning. When our sister transited to be with the Lord, we had our time of, uh, you know, just talking, but I challenged them at once. I said, no griefing. Remember my message that night. Why would you preach such a message when people have had certain things? Because her transition is not a tragedy. We know exactly where she is and... Whatever it is that the devil orchestrated, we are happy that she's rejoicing. Paul said, for, for me, to live is Christ. He says to die. He uses a business language. Gain. Gain. I refuse to be negative. There is nothing any man will do to me. Listen, that will make me sit down. I'm just negative and say, oh God, some of you say, oh God, take my life. You will soon die. No, 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 no. It's not a negative prophecy. It's a warning. It's a caution. We do it. Oh God, no marriage, no job, nobody to see me. Listen, listen. There is an atmosphere around you that is making that happen. You won't agree, but I'm telling you this. There is an atmosphere. I've seen ladies. Please, um, don't, 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 uh, don't think that I'm using this against any lady. I've seen certain ladies that may not even consider themselves to be as good looking. And you see the kind of brothers coming because they are optimistic. They know I will marry. They talk about their children with confidence. And you who stand say, children care. Where is the man? And then you find out that they sit down and true to it in your presence. Five people are calling and say, agree for me now. I'm ready to marry you. And you are there with your negative atmosphere. Human beings have prophetic atmospheres. They can repel or bring things to your life. Right? So a guy wants to say hello to you. They say, turn around and, 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 turn around and say hello to your, your, your neighbor. And a, a guy walks to you and you carry your anger and bitterness. That guy came for Koinonia just like you. How are you, sweetheart? Sweetheart, you don't stop there. Oh. This person that is talking is maybe he's even getting married soon. You now carry your anger. You create. This is why many people don't have friends. Two weeks and the friends are tired of them. Because there is an atmosphere that drives every good thing out of your life. A negative atmosphere. An atmosphere that is, is, is from a wrong mindset. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. You will never hear me say anything negative about Koinonia. I'm the number one fan of this ministry. I only see what God is doing. 
and I celebrate it. You will not see me sit down and be talking about another man of God. And I'm telling you, Pastor Alpha, do you know that we saw blue flower in his church instead of yellow? No, never. Never. You must become very kingdom-minded and positive. I guarantee you, if you speak on the strength of that conviction, things will change in your life. I expect people to bless me every day. I'm surprised if they don't bless me. I expect it. It's not pride, it's the truth. Even this night, there are people... No, 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 no. I, this is my mind. You, you don't expect anything. You are even surprised when it comes. You say, for me, are you sure I'm the one not to give? Why can't you... Listen, 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 listen. What makes you think you do not deserve it? Say, I deserve the blessings of God. Shout it, I deserve the blessings of God. Say one more time, I deserve the blessings of God. I'm not teaching you carnality. I'm teaching you how to walk in victory. Many people always believe it is the chaff that belongs to them. If you have been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more, brothers and sisters, with your heavenly father gave? How much more? Every time you talk to people, there are some of you, you talk about people and say, what's the latest? What's the latest mean what is wrong in the person's life now? After six months of not meeting the person. Are we together now? What's the latest? Oh, she has a shop, so what's the latest? It looks like nobody is even going to say, I said this, I said this. I choose to believe the word. I choose to allow it become the construction of my mindset. Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he also do, and greater works. Brothers and sisters, I believe this. I don't know who is not working for, and I really feel bad for them, but as far as I'm concerned, this thing is going to work for me. There will always be people coming for koinonia. Lives will keep being changed. We will keep rising from glory to glory. When people say there is a casting down, for us here there is a lifting up. It's by the hand of God. The anointing of the Spirit will never run dry in this house. At every point there is increase. The word of God will never be scarce. It will never lose its place. Every time you come for koinonia, you will keep being blessed. That name will keep rising. This is my mindset. This is what I believe. This is how I live. In the open and in the secret, in my sleep, this is what I believe. I believe that favor follows me like a shadow. Everywhere I go, even people who do not want me, there is something upon me that compels them to bless me. I expect it. When it happens, I say, that's right. Consistent. I'm not going to betray my destiny with a negative confession. I will not. I will not. I will not. Jesus is glorified consistently in my life. Everywhere I go to minister, they receive the touch of God. I am a blessing. I'm not a liability to any man. I'm not a cost to any man. I choose to believe I am a blessing. Because he said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Are we together? This, are the, this is, is part of the secret that has preserved and multiplied the anointing of the Spirit upon my life. Don't you think it's just prayer and fasting alone? There is an understanding that keeps the anointing comfortable in me. Nothing in me will choke the anointing out of me because I have learned to create the atmosphere. I have an unction from the and I know. That's why you will keep coming. You will drag yourself from your room by an agency you cannot explain. It's called anakazo. It's at work. It's the compelling power of the Spirit, supported by a healthy mindset. I will never be a failure in life. Me and poverty have signed up forever. I waved it goodbye, it waved me back. There's no possibility of meeting again. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name.
Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, as far as your eyes can see, to you I will give us an inheritance. He said, Abraham, from where thou art, it's okay that you are where you are, but from where you are, he said, lift up your eyes. From where you are, lift up your eyes and see. Northward, southward, eastward, westward. He said, as far as your eyes can see. Brothers and sisters, I see far. I see far. Are you seeing your today? Or you are already seeing what God has designed? Listen, if you see it, brothers and sisters, you can carry your 250 naira trouser and move happily. Because what people are seeing is a mirage. They will soon see what is true. The Bible says the things that are on the scene are temporal. Temporal. I see a ministry with prosperity and abundance. I see a ministry touching people all over the globe. I see a ministry winning souls and saving lives. I see a ministry blessing people like, an, like a tree, like an edifice. That's what I see. That's what I see. I see a family of peace. I don't see myself being a wicked father. I don't see myself being an irresponsible father. I choose to be a good man. I, are we together now? It's a choice. This is what I see. I see Koinonia having the best workforce any ministry can have. That's why I celebrate them. That's why I honor them. You will never turn and see me embarrass the people I'm embarrassing myself. I love them and they know it. I'm not embarrassed about my love for them. Because they are gifted people. And I've created the atmosphere for them to be motivated by love and revelation. Not force. God speaking to us. You've got to culture your atmosphere. Sister, your, the next level of your life is at the mercy of your mindset. You've got to change it tonight. And say, look, the Bible says male and female he created them. There is somebody who loves me. I may not see the person, but there's somebody who appreciates me. Forget about the one who came and looked at you and said, you think you are fine. Let him carry his trouble and go. But you know what you are looking at. I am a mother who will birth prophets and apostles and preachers. This is the mindset. Are we together now? You look at your academics and it looks like it's no diving. And you say, I know my Redeemer lives. And people say, let's be real. Be real. You say, this is my reality. I reject that thing you are trying to tell me. My reality is what the Word of God says. And I choose to believe it. 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 Ah, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the great of the Lord say so. I choose to say it because I believe it. It says the, the righteousness of faith speaks in this wise. On, on the strength of conviction you must speak. So we are not just praying blindly. Oh, I know my life is blessed. And you just want to say, oh, we really, well, let's just continue. My life. No, 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 no. That's not conviction. That's not conviction. See, in my little work, I don't boast of being a general in the knowledge of God. But I know something about Him. He is faithful. This attribute of God, I can tell you experientially, God is faithful. God is faithful. I've seen his faithfulness. That's why I take out time to celebrate him. Those who put their trust in him never go disappointed. I guarantee you. If you were disappointed, you did not put your trust in him. If you really put your trust in him, you will watch your way maker step into what looks like there's no way and begin to create ways for you. The night time will look like morning will never come. But when he arises like a mighty man that he is, you will see him move. My own is to keep agreeing with him. Lord, I agree with you. I may not see where I'm going, but I know that with you is a glorious destiny. While you are saying it, they, they laugh at you. No problem. They should keep laughing. Because when it happens, they will say he said it. I will never be ashamed of speaking the word of God. Many of us are embarrassed about it. 
So you believe it, but you keep quiet. You say, Lord, I thank you because you are changing my story. And, and you now look and they, they laugh at you and they say, Mr. Man, look, let me tell you. If I am God, I will hear your prayer, you that you are praying. See, when they tell you that kind of thing, you feel bad. Ah, I shout it to the mountain top. We are going from glory to glory. From grace to grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. And that's what I believe. That's what I believe. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. The word let there is permit. This is a very simple message tonight. That is an attempt to challenge us. To know that our thought life has a lot to do with our destiny. When you come to my place, you don't see anything that reminds you of the devil and failure. Nothing. Nothing. Everything reminds me of heaven and greatness. I have a little board where I wrote three scriptures. One about the anointing, one about favor, the other one about, about increase or greatness. And I love it. Some of us are negative. We must change. Negativism will make you birth things you do not want. Please believe me. Pastors, our minds must be stayed on what the word of God has said. There may not be money in the account of the ministry. There may not be this and that, but I choose to believe. I'm not just confessing blindly, but you choose to believe. My God is faithful. My God is alive. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And when it's time to pray, I want us to believe. As you pray, you pray away these negative things that we have allowed the devil to put in our minds. The Bible says, casting down every yes, sir. There are imaginations that have exhausted themselves above the knowledge of the Christ. You went home this morning and there was no magic to cook food. You went home and there was nothing. There was just pepper. And you look at it and say, this is a mirage. My God is faithful. What about the welfare I'll be sending to foundations tomorrow? I see myself doing it. Papa Oyedeko, way before he had the money to buy any designer, shouted, he said, yeah, I can never be poor. He saw something. He saw something. To an extent that he was in America, and he said, God sent him down to come and make the people rich with no evidence on your own part. Brothers and sisters, I believe him. I judge him faithful. He has been tested through different dispensations and he has been found faithful. My life is too small to judge the faithfulness of God. From glory to glory You are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me prophesy glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me from glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory you are taking me while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for our light affliction which is but for a moment that financial scarcity is for a moment, brothers and sisters. That sickness is for a moment. That limitation is for a moment. He said, though weeping endures for a night. He says, joy, joy, joy comes with the morning. You are not the first to see carryover on the board. If you wore a matriculation gown, you will wear a convocation gown. Oh, come on now. There is nothing happening to you that is new. That's why I said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's where you will share testimonies that are worse than yours. And how God delivered people out of it. You are not the first to not have food to eat. I share this thing humorously. I'll never forget one, one time in my life, I was so broke, things were so bad, I bought bread. 
Well, for, for some people, that's prosperity now. I bought bread and then with granite and just choked the thing inside and I was just eating and rejoicing. I'll never forget locking myself and dancing. I was dancing because I saw people blessing my life. I said, the anointing in my life is an endangered species. It's impossible for me to be ignored. It's only a matter of time. When I said that, there was no hope of anybody bringing any seed to Naira to say, take. He is taking you. Sister, you will rise like an edifice. I'm telling you. It's from glory. To glory. You are taking me. Personalize it as we prepare to pray. Glory to glory to glory from glory. To glory. You are taking me. Glory to glory to glory to glory from glory to glory. You are taking me. Shout in the sun say the name of Jesus. All I see around me is the goodness of God, is the mercy of God, is the favor of God, is the faithfulness of God. All I see around me is increase, glory, beauty, favor. I reject every thought that is not consistent with the word of God. I am a blessing. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Lift your voice and prophesy. We cast down. By the blood of the eternal covenant, every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of the Christ, we cast it down. We cast down thoughts of failure. We cast down thoughts of limitation. We cast down thoughts of inferiority. Oh, hallelujah. We are well favored. The blessed of the Lord, moving from glory to glory. We think only on things that are pure, things that are true, things that are noble, things that have virtue, and pray. I refuse to see challenges. I see the faithfulness of God. I see the mercy of my God increase on every side. On on every side, save on every side. The Parata Banana Shapa, Recate, Cocoso, Recate, and Precate, make sure you are praying inside and outside. Hallelujah. Tell them in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I tear down every negative thinking, every negative mindset, every thinking on failure, every thinking on mediocrity, everything that makes me look like a nobody. I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, I challenge it. Challenge cultural mindset. Challenge the speakings of men over your life and destiny. For as a man thinketh, so he is. For as a man thinketh, so he is. Out of the abundance of your heart, of your mind, of your spirit. Your mouth makes proclamation. I reject failure. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitation. I reject failure. I reject limitations. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, listen. He said, we having the spirit of faith, as it is written, I believe and therefore I speak. He said, we also, like faithful Abraham, we believe and we prove that we believe by speaking. Are we together? Everything you know the word of God has said for you, you are going to speak it. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Are you ready now? Lift your voice and prophesy. Oh, I'm the head and not the tail. Come on, create reality. Above and not beneath. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him from them all. No man is able to stand against me. All the days of my life, my path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I am like a well watered garden. The smell of my life is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Increase on every side, favor on every side, glad tidings on every side. Prophesy, prophesy. I declare in the name of Jesus, I'm rising from one level of glory to another. Gentiles come to my life, they are kings to the brightness of my rising, where I've been deserted so that no man will go to me. I become an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. I'm like a well-watered garden. I am planted in the house of God and I flourish in the cause of my God in all age. I am fat and flourishing. I'm like a tree that is planted by the riverside that yields its fruit in season, whose leaves does not wither. Everything I do prospers. Everything I do prospers. There is an unction upon my life that makes things to work. Everything I do prospers. He reigns, He reigns, He is standing by my side to bring His word to pass. He reigns, He reigns, our God is an awesome God. He reigns, He reigns, He reigns, He reigns, He is standing by my side, to bring His word to pass, He reigns, He reigns, our God is an awesome, one more time, He reigns, He reigns, you are standing by my side. The last prayer point. Listen. The Bible says, even God, who quickened the dead, and collect those things that be not as though they were. Collect those things that be not as though they were. Collect those blessings that be not as though they were. Collect those favors that be not as though they were. Collect those miracles. Collect those connections. Collect those destiny helpers that be not as though they were. Collect those new levels that be not as though they were. Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. 
call them into your life. I call for destiny helpers. Pray. I call for prosperity. I call for increase. I call for favor. Call it forth. By the power of the Holy Ghost, you have an anointing upon you. Call it forth. Call for that miracle ministry. Call for that healing ministry. Call for those new levels of the prophetic. New levels of the apostolic. New levels of increase. Call for that direction. For the new level of life. Call for those ideas. Call for those strategies. For the next level. Call for those connections. Hallelujah. Let's add one more prayer point. Listen. The Bible says, If thou shalt say, not if thou shalt wish, on the strength of your conviction, if thou shalt say to this mountain, not any mountain, a specific mountain, if thou shalt instruct it, be lifted from hence and cast into the sea, and it says you do not doubt in your heart, you will receive, you will have. i like us to speak. There seems to be challenges in different areas of our lives. I'm not ignoring their presence. I'm only telling you they can change. Right now, open your mouth. Mention the mountains. And tell them the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The creator. The owner of the heavens and the earth. Go ahead. Migraine headache. The Lord rebuke you. Poverty. The Lord rebuke you. Delay. I say to you, be lifted and cast into the sea. Step back. The Lord rebuke you. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. Better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere. And I will dwell in the presence of the Lord and abide under the shadow of your wings and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord and abide under the shadow of your wings that was his prayer one thing have I desired, not the greatness of my kingdom, not the greatness of my throne, not a name. One thing I have desired and that I will seek after to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Scripture number two, Psalm 42 the first two verses, Psalm 42, we'll begin our reading from verse 1. Psalm 42, it says, As the deer or the heart panted after the water brooks, in that similitude, my soul longs after you, O God. Verse 2, it says, My soul tested for God. For the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? Scripture number 3. Revelation chapter 3. The revelation of Jesus given to Apostle John whilst he was caught up in the Isle of Patmos. Verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. 
Behold, Jesus is speaking. I stand at the door, he says, and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, the result, I will come in to him. I will come in to him and I will sup or eat with him and he with me. Are you ready for one more scripture? John chapter 14, we'll read 41, we'll read 21 and 23. The verse of emphasis being 23. John 14. Jesus again is teaching. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Help me complete that scripture. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And then Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode. We will not just visit him. We will make our abode with him. Hallelujah. From Genesis to Revelation, Scripture is full of God's desire to reveal himself to man. Hallelujah. The Bible starts, as we know, from Genesis chapter 1. And the Bible says, in the beginning, it says, God created the heavens and the earth. Now you know that that beginning was not the beginning that we know. It was not the beginning of our dispensation. This we call it eternity past. In the beginning God created the heavens, he created the earth. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark, void, formless, and the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the deep. Now, from, from verse 1, 2, 3, we really didn't understand the object behind all of that recreation as we know now. To what end was God doing all that he was doing? Why did he have to call the light back? Why did he have to make the sun to divide? Look, look at the meticulous process. God saying and seeing, saying and seeing. And the suspense was finally revealed when we get to verse 26. That all of the recreation and everything that he was doing, it was not just for plants, it was not just for animals, in fact, it was not just for himself. By the time we get to Genesis chapter 1, please give it to us verse 26. The Bible says, And God said, Having done all of these things, let us make man, Adam, that earth. Let us make this man using a very delicate formula. This man should not be like any other species and any other being. It says, let us make this man number one in our image. The image of God is what Satan looked for as Lucifer. Now he says, let us build man in our image. What is our image? Our character. The same spiritual quality that makes God, God. Let us make man in that image. And then, after our likeness, likeness means the way we function, two hands, two legs, that he would speak for things to happen, he would move, you know, and so on and so forth. And then the Bible says, and let us design this man such that when we are done with him, he sustains the ability to have dominion. Are we together now? Go to verse 28, please. And then, when God had... Decide this man, Adam, the Bible says, God said unto him, the first thing that man would hear from the lips of God was be fruitful. Multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion over this and that. And now Adam began to do all of those things. God himself expressed his desire not only to visit, not only to build, not just to express his power, 
but to tabernacle with man. Isn't it amazing that as beautiful as heaven was and is, God didn't seem satisfied with all the worship that happens in heaven. Here and there, all through scripture, we are given little um, privileges to see the activities that happen in heaven. And for every time we've had the opportunity to peep into heaven, all we see is splendor, all we see is excellence, all we see is worship. And yet, in the midst of it, there seems to still be a hunger in the heart of God. There's something he's looking for that is not in heaven. How could God be looking for something that is not found in heaven? Hmm. The beauty of the worship, the four and twenty elders, the creatures in heaven, the dexterity, the order of the angels, the beauty of the throne room, the splendor and the light of heaven. And yet in the midst of that worship, he would have cause to bow his head and say, there is more. There is still something I desire. Please follow carefully. We are dealing with hosting God. And then, when he finally found man, the Bible makes a very fearful statement that every time he would come in the cool of the day, he would come in the cool of the day to find out after giving that man dominion, after ensuring that he built the habitation of that man himself, he still came to find out. When man fell, the first person who addressed him was that same God himself. Adam, I have come as usual. Where are thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. And he said, who told you you were naked? They began a discussion. And then, as a result of the fall of man, please follow carefully. He was banished from the east of the garden, and he began to till the ground and live and experiment himself. The Holy Spirit had to leave him. Lost righteousness, lost dominion, and began to walk as a mortal carnal man. The administration of death through sin began to find expression in that man. Are we together? And yet, God in heaven took responsibility for that man's condition, even though he gave him a will. And again, you would hear the Bible say, God speaking, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Never said that to any angel. Never said that to any being in heaven. I have loved you, he says, with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God's desire to be with man. Usually this is what happens. God will give men instructions. From the nation of Israel, we see them do this again and again. And then they would violate his instructions and give themselves over through disobedience to their enemies. Is that true? And then the enemies would oppress them and they would not even, not, sometimes they would cry unto God, sometimes they would not even acknowledge that there is a God in heaven. And yet in heaven again, you see that restlessness will start. God will start searching for a prophet, searching for someone to say, look, just come back. He is not ashamed to show how vulnerable he is about this man. Satan sinned. There is nowhere in the Bible where a discussion came between God and Satan for reconciliation. No. There is no discussion in Scripture that the one third of the angels that fell, God said, All right, um, God, I am love. Love gives, love forgives. Let's talk. But man, man. Are you learning something now? I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. A time came when Jesus now was to come. It was only in the life of Jesus I saw excitement 
when you know that the end is disaster you are coming to die and yet you come with joy jesus left heaven and came with joy and when he was born listen look at the rigorous process leaving his throne i hope you know that jesus was not a servant in heaven god himself with joy leaving heaven to come not because of stars not because of feasts not even because of the the earth because of man again he was willing to become a baby and start afresh endure 30 years until the jewish custom will now allow him to be a man and then laboriously go through pain for three years and he said if man is the reason i am willing Are we together? Joy. Knowing he would come to die. That there was no other way. Man did not beg him and say, please come and die and help us. It was a choice that he made because of his desire to be with man. When you understand this, you will know that it is not God's desire to be distant from man. It's always his desire to reveal himself, his presence, his glory, to tabernacle with man. And so Jesus walked the earth. Watch this. As soon as Jesus started ministry, all he was interested in was still the same man. His first assignment was to look for men. And he said, follow me. Follow me, men. I'm interested in you. I want to make you. His entire 33 and a half years was about men. Not even himself. Men. From crusades to discussions. Even when it was time for Jesus to rest, he would not rest. When he saw a human, he would sit at the well and not feel embarrassed to talk to a woman who was not even understanding him. What was it about man that he didn't seem to have the ability to resist? Man. To the point that even when he was on the cross, he still did not keep quiet. He was talking with men on the cross. As soon as he went to hell, there was not much discussion with Satan, according to the Pauline epistle. He was there, defeated Satan, and was interested in men. The Bible says, Apostle Peter was teaching us that in hell, he ignored Satan when he collected the keys and went to men, preached the gospel to them, and said, this is why I came. Follow me. Men. It's in your Bible. The Bible says when he resurrected, he came out all saints. Is that true? Who were in Hades, the place of the dead, that they came out with him and filled the streets in Jerusalem. Here's how... David puts it, what is man? Because I, I suspect there is something in man that man does not even know. So what is man? That you are mindful of him, nor the son of man that thou visitest him. What is in man? Listen, if, if you hold a checkbook and it looks like a piece of paper, and anytime I'm coming close to it, you react. It tells me there is something about that checkbook that I may not know. Anything that touches man seems to get the attention of God. Could it be that there is something in man that man does not even know? What is man that thou art mindful of? Do you know the entire Bible is not just about God alone? But it's about God and his love towards man. Man. When Jesus walked upon the earth, whenever he reveals the Father, he reveals the Father for the sake of man. And then here's what he had to say. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare that place, he said, I will come and take you so that where I am, there you may be also. His desire for oneness, his desire to come close to man. So we know for a fact, according to scripture, that God 
does not pride himself in being distant from man. As great and mighty, mysterious and powerful as God is, his desire still remains not just for man to know him, but that there becomes an, an, an intertwining, a living and a dwelling together. And one day, very, very soon, when the trumpet sounds, we are not going to another planet. He's going to take us so that where he is, we will be there for a season. And then to show you how much he loves us, he's about to leave that heaven and come down. And come to stay, not to visit. I saw the old earth and the old heaven pass away. And now he comes to tabernacle with men on earth. While we seek to go to heaven, he's only seeking to keep us there to redress the earth and return with us. That means heaven without you is not my best. I'd rather come to the earth with you. This is God. This is Jesus. You have to understand this. I will tell you why I'm teaching you all of this. The desire of David. David said there is one thing I long for. There is one thing I long for. Not my throne. Not cooperation and loyalty from my citizens. There is one thing that I long for. I want to get to that point where I will behold your face. I will drop my royalty and drop everything. Once I know that I am where you are, I am satisfied. So many believers want to experience the reality of the presence, the glory, the grace, the power of God. So many preachers, so many individuals, even cities and territories. We have read through scripture and we have seen through modern history that men and women seem to have carried very superior dimensions of God's presence. And with the reality of that presence, many of them operated like gods literally upon the earth. In signs and wonders, unusual manifestations of God's power and grace. God walking, dwelling, living in men. The history of the church in Nigeria is full of all kinds and different levels of the moves of God. Men and women who walked upon this earth did mighty and terrible things because of dimensions of God that they carry. Just a few days ago, we had Yonggi Cho finally transited to join the cloud of witnesses. This was the man who was used mightily, marvelously. Mightily. Just help those under the anointing. See, so there is, please look up. There is a way an individual, there is a possibility that... The reality of the presence, the power, the grace of God. That new heaven and new earth can happen in a man today. That God, the reality of the full import of God's presence and power can dwell bodily in a man. Men can carry God. And that's the reason why I told you that we're going to look at all of this because there is a dimension of God that comes through the administration of Zoe, eternal life. But it does not stop there. Because every believer through the ministry of the Holy Spirit has that indwelling presence. But there are dimensions. This is what Ezekiel 30, 47 was teaching us. That just because water is flowing does not mean it's enough to create that effect. There are different levels. It is still the same river flowing from the same location. And I began to search. I began to study diligently what were the factors responsible for this manifestation, this godlike power that certain believers, certain humans, seem to exhibit 
there are men upon the earth and there have been men from scripture who manifested certain realities that are not affordable in the world of ordinary men. The possibilities that came from their lives, it was clear that they were not alone. And they exhibited godlike qualities. The Bible says men whom the earth was not worthy of. He archives them in Hebrews 11. And yet he says that they without us will not be perfect. That means there is still another one coming. There is another episode coming. Once upon a time an apostle, a viper beat him. And they said, you must be a sinner. The gods have come to judge you. And not really. He should die immediately. And Paul said, no, that's all right. There is something that we carry. Now, to our generation, this thing sounds like parables. But it is true. They called the apostles Zeus and Hermes. These were Greek gods. Men who were not Christians. They looked at them and said, we don't know what you are. But one thing we know that you are not is you are not human. You are not a pure human. You are a human plus something. And they were right. The Bible says that the earnest expectation of creation is not waiting for everybody. Mm -mm. It's not even waiting for humans. It said it's waiting for God to reveal. I think there's a version that says so. That... The earnest expectation of creation, King James says, um, is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. One version says, is waiting for God to reveal those who his sons truly are. Are we together? There is an implication to our oneness with God. But if we do not understand the principles that govern hosting these superior dimensions of God's presence and glory, we will keep speaking, we will keep confessing, but the reality of that divine life, the reality of that oneness may never find expression in us. And this is what brings glory to the name of the Lord, that all and sundry will look at you, and even though they are seeing a man, what is coming out cannot be produced by men. When Jesus walked upon the earth, they knew him as a young Nazarene, Mary's son, Joseph's son. At age 12, he was a diligent student. He did not go to the temple to study the Bible alone. He had classmates. And for the next 18 years, we do not hear of him again. The next time he comes, a prophet is baptizing people to search for this mysterious one who is God living among men. Be, then he sees Jesus and here's what he says Behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world He baptized Jesus and the Bible says the heavens opened And the Holy Ghost came upon him Watch this now Until then he was Jesus the son of Mary Jesus the word that had become flesh But the Holy Spirit came Rested upon him And he became the Christ of God And from that time he was led of the wilderness to be tempted of the devil in Matthew chapter 4. And then the Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. And they did not see the Nazarene ever again. The next person they saw was a sign and a wonder. One level of godlike manifestations. The only person they could relate to the results of Jesus was God. The God that their fathers told them about. He went and he saw a woman who was oppressed. With fever, Peter's mother-in-law. And he merely picked and said, look, go and cook for us. As simple as that. Mighty manifestations of power. Five loaves, two fish. He gave thanks. He said, don't worry, heaven is here. Go ahead and share it. Water that he turned to wine. We sing about it, but if it happens here now, we are going to run away. Is that true? How about... The widow had name. Going to bury her son. You see the kind of wicked spirit that was oppressing that woman? All the men in her life were dying. Her husband dead. Her only son dead. She was on his way to bury him and Jesus said, no, not so. Come. What is going on here? And he merely picks the boy. My God, the resurrection and the life. If Jesus came to your house, you would just begin to rejoice. You didn't have to tell him your issues. 
if Jesus stepped into your house, what a joy. And here's what he said, as my father sent me, with the same equipping, with the same assignment, even so, send are you. And today we have about 2.6 billion professing Christians on earth. And the earth still looks like the devil is in control. I'm stretching you a bit for a reason. Africa being the most religious of all the continents, the most spiritual, vocally professing Jesus. We believe in him. We sing about him. But there's almost nothing like him manifesting in and through us. To the point that we are even afraid of it. We hope it will happen. But if it does happen, the results show that we are not even prepared to receive that dimension, that God-like manifestation. Are we still together? Please help the person who begins to run now. I just saw two people in spirit. The power of God is coming on two people and literally like the grace, I'm seeing a yoke of delay just going like that. This is what I started saying. Please help them. We'll have time to preach. This is, um, I hope, am, am I fine? Okay. Praise the Lord. So two people, I just saw that. We'll still continue our teaching for the power of God. Just help them whether inside any of the overflows. I just saw that light because that, you see, this is a conference it's not just something we keep talking about. It would be a shame if all we do is just talk about this and share the grace and go. No. We didn't just come for a lecture. We came again to remind the devil that not everyone has given up on this project. There is a generation of people who believe that they will stand and walk in power. Praise the Lord. Please, when you see those two people, I want to help. You don't have to bring them out. Just help them. That light, I just saw them running by the Spirit, is a yoke of delay that God is breaking out of their lives. You know that delay is real. It can impede people, it can limit people, and stop them from manifesting the fullness of their potentials in Christ. Are we still following? Are we still together? So God desires, God desires to reveal Himself to man. But... He also desires that man will carry such dimension of his glory. John chapter 15 and verse 8, here's what he says. He said, herein is our Father glorified. Herein is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. When ye bear much fruit, when ye bear much fruit, when ye bear much fruit, I'm seeing a lady, I hope, I hope I'm not, I pray that I don't get interrupted, but I'm seeing a lady, there's such power of the Holy Spirit coming upon her. She's been preparing her heart and God has told you you are entering a new season and that that season you're going to begin to experience the glory of God in a very, very remarkable and unique dimension. This is what the Lord is asking me to tell you. The Lord is saying a season is changing for you. Changing for you. And you are going to begin to carry levels of the power of the Holy Spirit. There are things you could not do before. But that in this conference you are accessing grace. Grace is coming to you from heaven. This word is for a lady I'm seeing. Of course, when God speaks to one, He speaks to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. Man can carry God. Man can carry God. Man can carry God. Man can carry God. Madam, the woman wearing green, please stand up. Lift your hands. I caught that spirit right now. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. I declare by the Spirit of the living God that everything that oppresses you 
and will not let you and your family go through it. I declare right now, be delivered, be free now, and be free forever. Let the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you, and in the name of Jesus, let oppression come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Men can carry God. I really believe that one of the things that God is doing in this conference is just activating. I, I sense that this church has been through a season of hunger and preparation. You can see that there, is, there are hearts that are already very, very open and prepared. I assure you one thing, your pastor did not speak over you for nothing. It was a word from the Lord. It was a word from the Lord. It was a word from the Lord. This gentleman wearing red with your hand on your face. Stand up, my friend. The Lord is saying, as you announce to you, you are stepping into a new season of grace. I don't know him, but in the name of Jesus Christ, such power, the Lord himself is shifting you into a new season. It will not be like before, the Lord is saying. I am bringing you into a new season. Into a new season. Am I wasting your time tonight? To a new season. There is a gentleman and a lady. This is a choir. These people standing. A gentleman and a lady. The Lord is bringing restoration to your family. I just saw light and the Lord is speaking to me. He's bringing restoration. I decree and declare. Whatever it has has been with your family the lord sent me here by the spirit of the living god and i stretch my hands towards you i declare restoration for you and for your family two of you the power of god is coming upon you and this will be the beginning of a new season a gentleman and a lady a gentleman and a lady this is what god is showing me i decree and declare let there be restoration for you by the power of the holy spirit can you pray in the spirit in one minute everywhere outside inside just pray whether you are seated just pray shaneke parokas kodam brahas kade balakata shi de brande gede bakatos kade brande gede balakata he la pakata brande gede balakatos yadaba Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please sit down. We'll continue our teaching. I just saw light coming on a man. You are a pastor. I don't know where that man is, but I just saw light coming on him. Please let me just... Is, it's not good to disobey the Holy Spirit in a meeting like this. Kalis Kadiba. Just be sensitive. I tell you, there is such glory. This is, listen, one of the things that you'll be learning in this conference is that men can carry their climate everywhere. You can, you can stay with God and carry your spiritual climate. May God use you, my dear, this lady. The one putting her hand, yes, this one looking at me, stand up. Not you, the one at your back. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God use you in a way that you have never experienced. May my God use you in a way that you have never experienced. May God use you. There is a pastor. I will continue, but I'm seeing there is a pastor. I'm seeing an impartation. You came here, there is, um, you know, just that strong impartation. People have come here with hunger, genuine hunger, genuine hunger of the Spirit. The power of God is coming on that man. I don't know where you are, you are a man of God, but such glory. Your ministry is about to shift. In the name of Jesus, it's going to be a new season for your ministry. You will see signs and wonders in a way that you will marvel and wonder. Is he a pastor, this man? Is that man a pastor in this church? Where are you coming from, sir? I don't have a church, but I worship here. Okay, you worship here, but you're a pastor. 
You believe in the healing anointing? Look at me, sir. Lift your hands. Even as God has revealed to me, I pray for you. Look at me. May that grace come upon you. Take that fire. Right now, I stretch my hands. That glory is coming upon you. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. Take that fire. Let it shift you to a new level. And from you, just when you are, where you are standing, the road down, straight, there is the power of God is coming on someone. On this same road, just right down. In the name of Jesus, this is what I saw in my vision. Where this man is standing, the road, right down. The power of God is coming on someone. I don't know why God does these things. Mine is just to obey. But sir, you will never be the same. I assure you, you are drinking of a very, very, very ancient oil. Just this road, down. The power of God is touching someone. From where this man is, you can look at the road down. In the name of Jesus, may you never be the same. That oil from heaven is coming upon you and is shifting you. Shifting you supernaturally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone at the back, I'm seeing that grace for prophecy. The grace for the prophetic is coming on someone. Right now, at the back, very marvelous grace god has been using you in a way but even you you have not really seen that it's a call but tonight god is confirming to you that it's a call it's a marvelous call all your dealings in the secret place your times of prayer your times of fasting with the spirit god is confirming to you that this is a call by the spirit He will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Awesome man, awesome God. Please sit down. Please sit down. So we have established the fact that God seeks for that union. He seeks to tabernacle with man all through Scripture. We see his, his intention made known to man that he does not just desire to visit man. He desires to tabernacle with man. But you see, God is a God of systems and is a God of principles. So in as much as he's a God of love, he has exalted his word even above his name. That means he's constrained by the principles of his word. That is the reason why as powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. He had to go through the protocol that allows for the remission of sin. And the law is that without the shedding of blood, he did not just look at man and say, man, I am God, I created you. Sin, go out of man like you cast a demon. He had to submit himself. It took 33 and a half years in the flesh for man's sin to come out of him. Based on due process. From his arrival to the earth, to his ascension, to offer his blood upon that tabernacle in heaven. 33 and a half years thereabout for this deal, this issue of sin to be done with in man. So God is a God of principles. He will not violate his principles. And I want to share with you just for tonight very briefly just one key that can help a man to host very superior dimensions of God and will pray. I call it the desire of David. Second Chronicles, please, chapter six. Second Chronicles, chapter six. A verse of emphasis will be verse seven. Second Chronicles, chapter six. Please give it to us, so that we'll hurry up. Now, this is Solomon. In fact, let's start from verse one. 
This is Solomon about to dedicate the temple in Jerusalem. I'll back up a bit and give you a little context. Then said Solomon, the Lord had said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. We're reading down to verse 7. But I have built an house of habitation for thee and a place for thy dwelling. How long? Forever. The key word, I have built. I have built. It did not just appear. I have built a house of habitation for thee. My intention is that it will be a place for your presence to dwell forever. Next verse. The king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. Verse 4. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake unto his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there forever. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Verse 7. Now, it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Bible says that in doing so, it was a good thing. Are we together? Now let's go and see what happened with David. This is Solomon the son. Having built the temple, he's dedicating it now to the Lord. And he makes reference to the motivation that led to that construction. Are we together? Let's go to Second. Second Samuel 7. Second Samuel 7. Let's start from verse 1. The first instruction is from verse 1. It came to pass when the king sat in his house. Who is the king? King David. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. Now please look up. Why does the Bible go all the way to tell you the state of this man? It tells you that at the time this man began to think about God. He was not thinking about God because he had problems. God, keep, please keep verse 1 for us. God had given him rest round about. And yet that was the time he remembered God. When God gave his son rest round about, he forgot God. Until he regretted and documented his regret in Ecclesiastes. Are we together now? God gave David rest round about. Had no battles. Had no need. And yet David said it was never about the battles. It was never about the victory. It was never about rest. It was about my desire for you. Because if it was about battles, I have used you to triumph. If it was about prosperity, neighboring kings have brought their, their, their bounty and their gold and everything. I am comfortable. I may not need you again. And David said, even though you have given me rest round about, you still remain my obsession. Next verse. Verse 2. Be patient with the reading. We'll continue now. The king said unto Nathan the prophet... See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. What, what a desire. He's saying, look, as I'm sitting down right now, I'm not thinking about my throne. I'm not thinking about succession. Why would I sit down in this beautiful palace and I know that the ark of God, the same ark that brought me victory, the ark that was a representation of the presence of God, is still kept somewhere with curtains. Verse 3, And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with you. There is something in your heart, even as a successful man, you are concerned about the fact that uh, that desire and that longing in your heart, 
the longing that was there whilst you were a shepherd, even in the midst of all the achievements now, what else do you need? You are king. Enemies have been defeated. Your kingdom is experiencing peace. But David said, I still have a desire. There is a desire in my heart. My desire was never fame. My desire was never just to use God and find rest. I have found the rest. And yet, Lord, you had rest in heaven too, round about. And yet your heart was on me. Now you have given me rest. My heart is still on you. Desire. Pay attention. Next verse. Are we still following? Verse 4. It came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, Shall thou build a house for me to dwell in? That means God was watching from heaven the contemplation of a man's heart. And he was saying, God, I can't sleep. I'm a king. I have everything. But I need to be able to build you a place even in my lifetime. And God was revealing to a prophet and said, look, the desire of a man who loves me. Verse 6. Whereas I have not dwelled in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Next verse. Be patient. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel. Right? It says, with any of the tribes of Israel whom I have commanded, feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me an house of cedar? Verse 8. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from a sheep coat. God is giving him the history. From following the sheep to be ruler over my people, over Israel. I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest. We'll deal with this during our final session. And have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. And have made thee a great name. Like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Verse 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. I will plant them, and that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. We're reading to 18. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Look what is happening to him. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. And with the stripes of the children of men. Uh huh. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. As I took it from Saul. I will put away before thee. Whom I will put away. Whom I put away before thee. And thy house and thy kingdom. Listen carefully. Shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words. And according to all this vision. So did Nathan. Speak unto David. The last verse. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me thus far? Look up, please. David dwelt in peace, free from war, free from lack, and yet David had a desire. The desire was that God would find a resting place. That God would find a place to tabernacle in. And even when God told him, David, I've seen your desire. 
but you have shed too much blood. I may not allow you to be the one to build. He was not offended. He said, no problem. I will get the raw materials and keep. Let it be that someone who came out of me still builds that house for God. Can I tell you this? The number one factor that controls the manifestation of the hand and the presence of God to come and tabernacle with a man as a covenant is the heart factor. The heart condition of a man. Please pay attention. The heart condition of a man, according to scripture and in my experience, is the greatest determinant of the presence, the power, the grace of God. You've heard me say it again and again. We have thoughts that the secret to power, the secret to the glory of God, is just prayer and fasting, and that is wonderful. If your heart has been worked on, every other thing in this kingdom finds its place when your heart condition is right. Can I tell you this? No matter the spiritual activity you are involved with, if this heart factor, if your desire has not been screened and edited, you may never hold certain dimensions of God's presence and power. Herein lies the frustration of many people who are actively engaging in spiritual activities, but wonder why in spite of everything that I do, I don't seem to be able to carry the level of glory that I desire. Can I tell you this? You don't know if you truly love God when you have needs. You know if you truly love God when your needs are met. That's why the Bible put that scripture there. David had found rest. Do you know what happens to a human when he finds rest? I understand you need God because you need to build. I understand your children are still in school and you need school fees. But there is something about the state of a man's heart when he has no need again. David, tonight our assignment is to obtain grace from God. That impartation of the desire of David, it must come upon your heart. That you can look at wealth and riches. You have risen to the highest level in your profession. And yet you can come before him and say, there is still a desire, oh God. The same desire that was in my heart before I started is the same desire in my heart now. Please do not assume you understand what I'm saying. As simple as this is, if it is the God of heaven you want to walk with, you want to carry power and grace and presence, trusted with influence over nations and territories, beyond fasting, beyond praying, beyond spiritual activities, the heart of man, the greatest factor that invites God to tabernacle with man is his heart. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Listen, the desire of David is one that has inspired me and changed my life. Why would a king who had found rest round about sit down and his contempt if I were David my contemplation would not be God oh. may God forgive me but who knows do you know what it means to find rest round about you have estates you have houses all over the world you have accolades to your name you have children who are obedient succession is in place what do I need you for again David said, I have a desire. Prophet Nathan, you are a prophet. Help me tell God. I will not rest till I find a place for him in my lifetime. Lord, I will not rest till everything you have given me praise you. Till everything you have given me reveals Jesus. Do you know, every time God sees men who are ready to give all to prove him how much they love him, they attract his attention immediately. Now you will understand John 14, 21. Please give it to us. John chapter 14 and verse 21. John chapter 14 and verse 21. 
if you can see it and it's projected, can you read for me? Ready? Read, please. Let's, let's do 23. Let's do 23. One to read. Uh-huh. Love, love, love. If a man loves me and keeps my word, my father will love him and we will come. We will come and make our abode in his ministry, in his family, in his life, in his destiny. You will become a walking, living ark, carrying the presence of God everywhere you go. Then your life becomes a sign, your life becomes a wonder, first to you and then to everyone who cares to see. Can I tell you this? The secret behind the exploits of men, the secret behind the seeming greatness you see, is that covenant God has found hearts that in life and in death, only live to glorify him you may have heard my story many years ago the lord spoke to me and said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you are we together the heart condition in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, it has become an anthem in my life. A formula to host God. Number one, my son. Proverbs 23, 26. It says, my son. What is he asking you to give him? Not your offering. Not your singing. Uh-uh. Leave that one first. Not your prophetic acumen. Not your ministry. You can give God every other thing. But if your heart is not part of it, you've not given Him anything. The tray that carries every other gift you carry is your heart. Imagine that you want to give a president something or a governor or something. And maybe water. And you just pick it and throw it at him. That's not a gift. The tray that carries everything and makes everything you present before God honorable is your heart. Are we together now? We're going to pray. Mark 14. A very instructive story. Mark chapter 14. We'll start our reading from verse 1, please. The Bible says, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And then all of this happened. The, the chief priests, they sought to put him to death. Verse 2. Mark chapter 14. Okay, next verse. I hope, that's, I, hope I got that right. Yes. Verse 3. Watch this. The Bible says, and being in Bethany. Please look up. In the house of Simon the leper, he sat to eat, and a woman came. The Bible says that she had an alabaster box. Everybody please look up. An alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard. Then the Bible says it was very precious. And the Bible says she broke the box. Another synoptic account will tell you it was worth one year's wages. A salary of one year broke the box and poured it on his head and to the point that some had an indignation within themselves and they said why was this a waste that means every time you see this desire you will be tempted to think it's a waste of time a waste of life they called an expression of hunger and desire a waste What is this God thing that you are acting as if you didn't go to school? What is this God thing you are acting as if you are a failure? You already have results. Man of God, God has established you in ministry. What is this passion and rolling on the ground before God again? 
Remember the joy that was in the heart of David. When the ark was being restored, he was dancing and dancing and Saul's daughter looked at him and said, shame on you. There are ethics to royalty. You are violating the ethics of royalty. He said, I am dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. God had her and she died barren. I have preached this message for as long as I can remember. Yet, surprisingly, people listen, but they never truly get it. That the real secret to power with God, to grace from on high, more than spiritual activities, is when a man gets to a point where you have the desire of David. There is a reason why God made the covenants that he made with David. The heart factor. Vetting your heart to find out, do you still have a desire to see him lifted? To see him glorified? To see him revealed? Do you have a desire for his presence? Most people want power. Most people want miracles. Most people want fame. Hello? Don't, don't feel insulted. Most people, I keep saying it again and again. Most people, imagine with me please, um, one of these protocol, please come. Come sir, let me use you. Look at this fine gentleman standing here. Imagine with me for a moment that this man comes to me. He's been calling me from morning till evening. Apostle, I want to see you. And I tell him I'm busy. And he says, please, I have to see you. It's a matter of life and death. And then as soon as he comes to me, he's not looking at me. All he wants is my shoe. All that call for my shoe... I want to snap your shoe so I look for the kind. I want to snap your watch. And I'm standing in shock, wondering. You did not sleep all through the night calling me. Now that you have my attention, what are you looking at? I say, look at me. And he says, no, no, it's not about your face. I was just calling you because I was told that there is a material that you wear that is beautiful. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. For by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you know that I need to say I love you. box she broke it I can waste it if it is before you and he looked at her heart and said everywhere the gospel is preached even though this woman was not ordained into ministry you cannot ignore her because she has communicated her love can I tell you something I know about God there are certain dimensions in God that only genuine lovers, those whose hearts have been purged sincerely to love Him, 
not for things. I know we are humans. We need things to be. Some of you here are sick. Some of you came expecting increases of all sorts. But can I tell you sincerely, there are no gimmicks with God. If he cannot find himself in your heart, your heart must reflect his face back to him as a mirror. Otherwise, he does not trust what is there. Don't say I love the Lord. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than ministry? Do you love me more than titles? Do you love me more than power? More than signs and wonders? If I tell you to quit ministry now, will you still love me? If I tell you you may never drive a car in your life again, will you still love me? Or is the rolling just because you had a dream and you saw a car? There's nothing wrong with it. But you see, the prayer that God purifies your motive is a real prayer. A genuine prayer. We have a generation of people who love God today and in a heartbeat when God gives them rest roundabout. Why should I come to church again? I've gotten what I'm looking for. Why should I come to church again? I'm now a politician. I'm busy traveling around. I'm now a leader. I'm too busy. I, I will follow online one day. And God says, I knew it. See, God reminded David and said, let me let you know that I've not forgotten while you were a shepherd boy. Now you are king. I have seen the consistency of your desire. Every other thing changed except your desire. Listen. If you want God to bless you, change every other thing except that desire. Change cars, that's alright. Change buildings, that's alright. Change clothes, that's alright. Change approach to ministry, that's alright. But never allow that desire to die. The same desire as a shepherd boy. The same desire as a king. i like to see your glory revealed. Can I tell you this? If I have any fear in my life at all, it's not losing ministry. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing power. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing my name or what you call reputation. If I have any fear in my life, it's not untimely death. If I have any fear in my life, it's to get to a point where that presence where my heart condition my heart now exalts something above God you can exalt prayer and fasting above God you can exalt Bible study above God the Bible talks about God but God is a person you can even exalt heaven above God you can exalt breakthrough above God. My son, give me your hands. You want to host God? This is the secret. Most of my encounters, I tell you, they did not come because of any effort per se on my own part. There is one thing I can tell you. I sincerely and truly love the Lord. And I desire for his name to be lifted and his glory to be revealed. If ever I pray for power, it's not to make a name. It's so that God can give me the privilege and the opportunity to be an extension of him to people. Everything starts and ends with him. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. Listen. If I can get you to a point this night where you are willing to lay down all of the things that make you look like you love God, but in truth, 
there is an agenda that is locked up. Lord, I am tired of delay. There are yokes in our family. So they say, if I fast, I get your power. Oh yeah, let me fast. There's nothing wrong with that in itself. But if that is what leads you, he will tell you, okay, take, this is what you want. And most people will walk away from him. When David had found rest round about, he still had a desire. Lord, I cannot be sitting here and not build you a house. I know that you are God. You sit in heaven. The earth is your footstool. Yet, give me the privilege of bringing you close to find a place in my life. That in life and in death, you make up your mind that this thing is not just about church. This is not just about Christianity. I genuinely love you. And no matter what you give me, no matter where I go, my ultimate desire will be to see your glory revealed, to see your power revealed in me and then through me to my world. If that becomes your desire, you have passed the first test that can truly grant a man access to host God. Very superior dimensions of God. Otherwise, we will just wrap up a conference. You will receive miracles. You will receive many things. And recycle your frustration back to another one year. Seeking for something that only the size of God can feel. God put a realm called eternity in the hearts of man. And only his size can feel it. A car cannot feel it. Degrees cannot feel it. That is the reason why people become successful and still commit suicide and kill themselves. Nothing wrong with success. Ladies and gentlemen, you have not seen success till God has your heart. You will lay up gold as dust. You will not even know what to do with it. God will take the prayer request of many and give you as a gift. I made up my mind. It was a vow and a covenant with God. I said, Lord, if there is anything, whether ministry, power, if it has the ability to make me lose that presence, if it has the ability, I rather, I rather not be known in my lifetime. And yet my love and my passion for him, my desire to see him revealed, remains unchanged. Heaven, for me, is him being with me. Heaven is not when I fly through the skies. No, if he's not there, I don't want. If he changes his location to hell, then may I never go to heaven again. It is not about the location. It's about the person. It's not about the throne. It's him who sits on the throne. If the throne is empty, what should I do there? I have no business with the throne. You have to understand this. If he's not in the church, may I never have anything to do with church. If he's not in ministry, may I have any, not, never not have anything to do with ministry. If he's not in my prosperity, may I have nothing to do with it. He becomes the epicenter of my pursuit that I desire him more than life. And he says, this is for me. Let's go to the next level. Can I be sincere with you? I apologize if I sound harsh. But many of us, I can tell you the reason why you are unable. It's not because the devil is so powerful. It's because there is, there is a corruption in the sincerity of our heart. This hard thing. You can fast for 40 days and from day one, the heart is already corrupted. You will enjoy the mercy of God. But I tell you, if it is heaven you want to host. You've heard me say it in my teachings. Till today, when I go before God, Sir, I don't go before him as Apostle Joshua Selman. Nonsense! Apostle Joshua Selman. It's men that call me apostle, Lord. Lord, your boy is still here. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, 
you look beyond me. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and all your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. Here's the part of the song I love. I'm the one. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. want to host God you must love him you must desire to see him glorified not self not ambition Jesus revealed Jesus glorified and with our hands lifted up we will worship our King, and with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoice. With our hands lifted up to the sky, and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love in our King. Oh, 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 we just tell. I tell you sincerely, please listen to me. I know some of you are crying. It's a very simple message tonight. I have had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few extremely great people, believers, whether in business, in government, in ministry. And most times when I sit down with them, sincerely by God, there is nothing in itself that is exceptional. You will look for the wow factor and not find it. All your eyes will see is the, the plethora of limitations. Yet the results remain undeniable. The key is that when God comes, please anyone come. When your heart becomes genuinely right with God and He comes to hold you and say, let's go. Your life becomes a wonder. Please listen to me. You will be seeing a mountain and come close and not see it again. Because there is a hand that picks that mountain. And men cannot see the hand. So they think it's your hand that lifted it. When God decides to come and stay with a man. Moses understood this. He said, do not let us depart from here. If your presence, we still have our weapons of war. Don't let us depart from here. We'll only embarrass ourselves. How will they know that we are different? He said, my presence will go with you. Not my presence will visit you. Moses knew it. My presence will go with you. And I, by that presence, David said, cast me not away from your presence. Cast me out of the throne, I agree. But cast me not away from your presence. It says, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Can I tell you this? Please look at me. If you lose money and you still have him, you did not lose if you lose ministry and you still have him sincerely 
you did not lose. But no matter what else you have, if he's not there, you lost. Oh, you lost. It's only a matter of time you will know that his presence is what controls everything. I have come tonight to help you understand the spiritual protocol that governs hosting God. And one of it tonight is this heart condition that I call the desire of David. I desire you more than things. I desire you more than rest. I desire you more than money. Can I be sincere with you? This is the grace and one of the mysteries that has kept your precious pastor, the man of God, 20 years with all that has happened. I sat back there and while I was watching, I said, this is my message. When you see results that humans cannot produce, you know that God was involved in it. And I am telling you that you don't, you don't, it's not a parliament that calls him to come. You don't vote him to come. Your heart condition is the magnet that draws his presence to you. There are magnets that are weak. They may not be able to draw much. But there are magnets that are powerful. They can lift cars. You can use them and lift cars. Your heart is that magnet. When you love the Lord, you can sit down and an anointing will leave a conference somewhere and come and meet you in your room. While you are there saying, Lord, I may not have all it takes to serve your purposes, but if for any reason you can find a vessel in me, I am available. And that anointing will leave a conference and come and meet you in your room. Some of you are crying because God has been showing you this message in dreams. You have not been understanding it. God is saying, it's not that I cannot lift you. It's not that I cannot open a door for you. But your heart condition. Many times I restrict my blessings to preserve you. Because as it is, if you find rest in this condition, you may not even be a Christian again. Have you not seen people who were workers in church? And God just lifted them. They went abroad and they came back like demons. House on the Rock. Enugu. One more time, the Lord is speaking to you. Don't just lift your hands. Lift your heart. Lift your heart. That you can give him your heart. And say, Lord, from today, you are my obsession. Blessing or no blessing. Lifting or no lifting. I will teach my children your ways. Even when I sit on the throne, I will never forget you. You have become my obsession. As simple and childlike as this is. And he comes to you in power and will invest levels of his presence upon your life that you will be surprised. You will watch doors open. Brothers and sisters, you will see God do things in your life that you will marvel and wonder. People will look at you and they cannot add up where the result is coming from. But then it never stops happening because there is divine presence. You have captured levels and dimensions of God. Please don't miss tomorrow's sessions. When I found this secret, I said I will never let it go. My heart, my heart, my heart. More than my prayer, more than my preaching. My heart, my heart, my heart. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you more than ministry. I'm not serving and loving you and desiring to see your kingdom come just because I'm succeeding in ministry. Even if I were failing, my passion would not, be, would not change. Change everything in your life. But leave that desire. Leave it there. Leave it there. Don't replace it with things. Don't replace it with titles. Don't let age fade the desire away. Are we blessed? 
Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If you are interested, I stand at the door of your heart. That's the part I'm interested in. I'm knocking. What is he doing at the door of your heart? If you choose, you can open the door and let me find space. But if you think your heart is full and you are too busy, I am patient, I can let you be. But you can open that door and I can come in and you shut that door and I will eat with you. He was talking to John. John the Revelator was archiving what he was telling the seven churches. Behold! He was not talking to seven unbelievers. He was talking to seven churches. I am still looking for your heart. It's not new birth. This is not giving your life to Jesus. He's talking about a deeper and a richer experience. Apostle, but I've been born again. That's not what I'm talking about. He's still standing at the door. We're going to spend 10 minutes praying. Please don't be distracted. And the prayer is a prayer of surrender. Lord, impart upon me the desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David. According to Psalm 27. Please give us Psalm 27 and verse 4. As we pray. All the overflows outside following online. We are about to pray. One thing have I desired. You have desired many things. But leave all those desires. One thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. And to behold you all the days of your life. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your voice. Cry to the Lord. This is you and Jesus for the next 5-10 minutes. You and Jesus, your maker. The one whose presence you want to see manifest in your life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depths of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. House on the rock, Enugu. Enugu state. Pray for the desire of David. One thing have I desired. Are you praying? Please pray. Don't be tired. Take it serious. Oh, I desire you. I desire you. I desire you. The fullness of your presence and your glory in my life. Someone is praying. Nothing can take your place in my life. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Dethrone every idol. Idols of achievement. Idols of vain desires. Hallelujah. Please look at me. There are people today who threaten pastors and men of God and tell them if God does not answer my prayer, I will stop being a worker in this church. If God does not answer my prayer, I've given God, I've been a worker for one year. Can I tell you the truth? Do not make the mistake of the workers in the parable that Jesus gave. 
The Bible talks about a parable of the owner of a vine and the workers. I just felt in my spirit to say this. There are many people whose Christianity is conditional. While it is true that there is the covenant of service, that when you serve the Lord, He will bless. But can I tell you this? You must love Him more than that. I've been sweeping the house of God and nothing is changing. I'm going. And God says, that was it? Was that the motivation? Hallelujah. When your passion, your love, your drive, nothing can take that place. When you are alone with God, you remind yourself again, He's the object of my obsession. Lord, you have helped me, you have shown me mercy. But regardless what happens to me, good or bad, one thing for sure is I may change every other thing, but not you, not my love, not my passion. I will die loving you, die serving you, die living for you. All these things, we are more than conquerors on account of that love and that passion, that desire. Please purify your desire. Purify your motives. Why do you seek him? They sought him because they were hungry. As soon as he fed them with 5,000, with, with five loaves and two fish, all of them threw the excesses and went away. And he said, go and gather the crumbs. Twelve baskets. They wasted it. We've used you and we've dumped you. We're on our way going. And he looked at the disciples. He said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? We didn't just come for, we, who, whom shall we go? You alone have the word of life. And he turned them eventually to apostles of the Lamb. And some, even when they ran away, they came back repenting with brokenness. Peter said, depart from me, I am a sinner. Simon Barjona, he said, John 21, lovest thou more than me more than this? He said, yes, feed my lamb, then feed my sheep, then feed my sheep. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Can I tell you sincerely, I stand before the God of heaven. There is nothing in my life today that I cannot surrender. To prove my love for Jesus, my passion for him. I love him more than that. And my assignment tonight is to impart upon you that desire of David. I don't know how God did it in my life, oh, but it's my prayer that what he did to me, let it happen for someone in this place this night. In the name of Jesus, that no amount of money, no amount of lifting will ever make God look like a nuisance in your life. That you will not just carry him like an extra luggage. That divine presence you will love the presence of Jesus more than power, more than ministry. If that happens to you, then you will also get the blessing of David. Don't claim the blessing of David. The blessing of David is dominion. To find someone to establish his kingdom. Today when you look at Israel, the symbol of their flag is the star of david not the star of abraham no the star of david the star of david listen to me it was on the strength of this that i started having encounters it was not just fasting and prayer many of the encounters i've had today that have changed my life it was god coming to me and it has not ended coming to me my son let me open this to you you can open this bible and search and there are things you will never see until god comes to you he brings them there are things that are not studied you are he comes and brings you into that body of truth 
You know, it's easy for men of God to want to take pride in things like this, to make it look as though it's our doing. It's not true. There are some things that only God, God comes to pick you. Signs and wonders. This grace for signs and wonders that you see. Brothers and sisters, it did not, I don't think I would have had the strength and the stamina to go through it and get it that way. With the sincerity of my heart, loving Jesus. And here he comes again. He promised that if you love him and you mean business with him, you will find him. You can find God and you can host him. And a generation can know that you carry him. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. That every lukewarmness, please just help those under the anointing. And everything that has stolen His love, stolen your passion. Some of you, when you started with God, you were not like this. But right now you have thrown everything that is God in your life. Just the routine of church. Sunday, in and out. But your heart is no longer with Him. He's speaking to you seriously. There is need for that restoration. Because in this end time there are mighty things and marvelous things that God is doing. In men and through men to the nations. But he meets people who love him sincerely. Please look at me. I just sense in my heart to use this opportunity and make an altar call. Can I do that? I'm going to make a very serious altar call right now before I pray. Within this auditorium and all the overflows, there are people whilst you were hearing me speak, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you. And say it is time to make things right with Jesus. Now I, I can't force you. You are the one. You can sit down and share the grace and go back. But this conference was so put by your man of God. Because the Lord is giving someone an opportunity. To restore that love and that fire. For some of you, you've been around the things of church. But you have never truly taken God seriously. I'm going to count one to five. Wherever you are, those outside you may not, maybe you may just move to your screens outside for the sake of space. But those within here, if you belong to that category as I count one to five, honorably, I'd like you to run and come and stand here. One, run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus. Lord, I'm tired of this. Give me a new beginning. And for all of us who are standing, please don't look at them. Just be praying. Talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart. Two. Are you coming to Jesus? Give me a new beginning. Give me a new beginning. Genuine relationship. Three. Someone is running to Jesus. Don't be distracted. The few minutes that we have, don't waste it. These are moments of destiny. If there's no space, just stand at the aisles while we pray. Come to Him. Come to Him. Four. One more count and we're done. If you're still sitting, please rush and join them. Here at this conference, after 20 years, God is opening a door for you. Hallelujah. Now, in Jesus' name, please listen to me. Some of you here are giving your heart to Jesus genuinely and sincerely for the first time. Some of you, I presume you are rededicating your, your life. Please, let it be sincere from your heart. No playing games. Let it be sincere from your heart. Young and old, I honor and I salute you. I truly appreciate you for the courage to come out. Those in the overflows, thank you. Following online, 
from whatever nation we're about to make the altar call i'd like you to be part of it right now you're following in your home your office your device please participate right now i want to plead with all of you who are in front can you lift your right hand as high high above your head to the heavens jesus is here i'm about to lead you to pray a prayer and i want you to pray it sincerely A miracle happens when we pray. A miracle happens when we pray. More so when we pray in faith. Please say after me loud and clear, inside, outside. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I need your life, your presence, your glory. I repent of my sin. I declare that I do not have the power to save or help myself, but I believe in Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you shed your blood for my sin, that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today and forever, I am a child of God. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. By the authority of scripture. I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. Please help two of them. The power of God is coming on two of them right now. There are two people just here. I don't know. I just saw that in my vision. Among those who are out here two of them i just saw the power of god coming on them in the name of jesus christ i declare this experience will launch you into a new season not not, not just that woman there are two independent people aside from her the power of god is coming on them in the name of jesus christ i pray for you that the lord himself will use you mightily you will experience his grace supernaturally and i pray for you in the name that is above all names let this be the beginning of a new season in your life a season of fire a season of passion in the name of jesus that you will love him above and beyond anything that is in this life nothing should take his place in your life for in jesus name i pray amen and amen now um I'm going to ask you, I presume, okay, what will happen is you return back to your seat rejoicing. If for any reason there is a call for those who have given their hearts to Jesus Christ, please do well to make yourself available. But before then, I'm seeing um, some counselors passing a slip. Do well to collect it before you go. Please be patient. Make sure you have the slip. Can you lift it up? Let them see what it looks like. So uh -huh. you can pick one. Just pass it. Make sure that you pick it. Go back to your seat. You can just fill it legibly and hand it over to any of the officers after the service. The Lord bless you and honor you. Please let's rise as I speak over your life. We have about five minutes and we're done for this morning. The message tonight, do not forget, is that God desires to tabernacle with men. He's proven that man has always and remains his obsession. From Genesis to Revelation, God's object, God's motivation is love. The object of that motivation is man. Above and beyond anything else, he desires man. He loves man. He's unashamed to declare his vulnerability towards man. But for him to tabernacle with man, there are conditions that must be met. Chiefest among them, as we've discussed tonight, is the heart condition more than other spiritual principles that i'll be teaching you the heart of man and god granted us grace to look at the simple message through the life of david 
that a man can have that desire. Psalm 27. One thing have I desired. Let that be your desire. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. The grace to hunger. The grace to love Jesus. The grace to passionately desire Him. And to seek Him all the days of your life. I declare that that grace comes upon you now. Say Amen. amen. Say Amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And then I pray for you. Everything that fights that desire in your life whether it's an addiction whether it's a habit whatever it is in the name of jesus here at this conference we declare it broken forever any wrong association that fights that place of jesus in your life every wrong pursuit that attempts to fight that place in your life in the name of Jesus, you are set free from such associations. And I pray for you. May the Lord reintroduce himself to you. In visions, in dreams, through scripture. May you have fresh encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. From now and all through this conference, I declare fresh encounters. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now... Just, just a counsel in one or two minutes and then I'll be back to my seat. Let me give you an advice. All through the time of this conference, may I request advice and strongly suggest that you remain very spiritual. Minimize distractions. That means from here when you...